Hello, people. Uh, I appreciate you, whoever shows up today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to talk about a few things. I got a pretty good conversation about Roy DeMeo already going on in there. Uh, some people, you know, the question today, was he a gangster or a serial killer? So we're going to talk about Roy DeMeo. I'm going to have Tommy Stiggs here. And Tommy knows a lot of stuff. And I appreciate him bringing his knowledge to the table. Uh, and if other people show up, I'll let them in. Uh, I'm not sure yet on Joe. Joe's out and about. But, uh, and I also want to talk to you about a couple other things. First of all, I started a website. And the website is mobtubers.com. And we started a blog. On the blog, I got 3,000 views in three days. Just on the blog part. And what we what we've been doing is... Uh, I have a friend of mine from Brooklyn that's been writing the stories and he deserves all the credit in the world and he's been doing a great job. And uh, so I'm hoping that you guys, if you haven't checked out the website to go over there and check out the blogs, the blogs are really good. But the problem is I got 3000 viewers going over there in three days. So, <laughs> uh, and also uh, if any FBS people come in here, they're welcome. As long as they're decent, they can, argue and have different opinions but we don't want to block them unless they get really stupid okay and uh let me bring stigs up right here what's up hey, tommy how you doing how you doing pal and uh i was glad that tommy can come in here today and uh so we're we're, we're, we're gonna have a conversation today about uh roy de mayo and uh what do you think in general about Roy DeMeo, which you learned about him over the years. I think it goes back to what a lot of people say that in the life and in the family, people were used for different things. There was a brain that did say stock, stock scams, right? There was a guy that, uh, I don't know, did vending machines, right? There was a guy that did this, that, and the other thing. He was, uh, he was efficient at what he did. He was a killer. I think he was more than just a killer, like a killer for the family. I think he had a serial killer mentality. Those numbers and the way, you know, in the business or in that life, you clip somebody, you clip somebody, right? And many, many who have gone bad and told their stories say it just comes with, you know, it comes with it, right? And you get numb to it because you're doing the job that you're told to do. But when you're in a, you're making it like a sausage factory. It's a different story. You know what I mean? It's a whole different situation. You're you're in a different level. And this guy, and th people have to remember, when he killed people, he took them like a deer. <laughs> took them to the back of the bar, gutted them, oh and cut their legs off, cut their I mean, arms off, cut their heads off. They did a very efficient job. I mean, his crew was a killing crew. Probably besides John Gotti's crew, it probably was like one of the most feared crews. Would you say that, Tommy? Yeah, I mean, it goes without saying. It's just his reputation is etched in stone as to what he was and what he was able to do. And feared by many, even people above him, he would, they feared him. They feared him, you know. So, so he was an earner in some ways. I know he had some scams going on, the cars, this, that, the other thing. But and he was he a had, stone, stone cold he, killer. And he had a, a, a one of the people with basically like a son to him. And so um, this this kid goes out and he kills two Colombians, I believe it was Colombians, steals their dope, takes the dope back, doesn't say anything to anybody. So it's obvious that he's trying to get over on everybody, including Roy DeMeo. And then all of a sudden, Gadji comes to uh, DeMeo and says, look. The Colombians are going to set some hit squads up here and start a war with us. And we yes, don't sir. want these people on the streets coming up here because they don't care. They'll just come up, wipe out your family and go back to Colombia. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I actually think the Colombians gave them a good option to take in. The, uh, what was the kid's name again? Rosenblum, was it? Or Yeah, I heard about that one. Yeah. That yeah. Was... Let me get the name right here. Well, yeah, anyway, well, this kid pretty much uh, caused a lot out of trouble so he he basically had to go and uh yeah let me see i'm sorry i'm not gonna i'm trying to pull something up here i, I suck at this sometimes okay so okay so he a uh, chris that's right 
Lee, Lee, I have two slow questions. And steady. Slow and steady, man. There's no. Yeah. It's all easy. It's all easy going. So, Just go with the flow. Don't worry about it. So, so this kid, uh, Chris, he's really close to Chris. He gets him to come in the bar. He comes up behind him, and he shoots Rosenberg right behind that, right behind the head, right in the head. But he didn't cut that body up because he respected the kid. But he had to send a message, so they put him in his car. They shot the car up with a machine gun. They put bullets all over it and left it like a message. And uh, I just found that a pretty fascinating story because that was to be. They say that was the beginning of the end with the Mayo. Because of all the guilt the Mayo had that he had to take this kid out, that he was basically grooming. You know what? Uh, what? You know what? Yeah. He was an addict. Yeah. That's, that's an addict tendency. And he's well, shooting up and he's shooting up and he's killing drug dealers. I mean, that's just got hot, hungry for more. Got it's an it's an addict, it's an addict tendency. Yeah. The, the way he did things, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he thrived off it. It made him feel great, I guess. Right. And so they're saying that uh, he was responsible in the 10 year period for over 100 deaths. Uh, and they say probably 200 deaths. You know, the deaths, the deaths within the life are sometimes it goes with the life, but you clip them and you hit them behind the head and they lay there. That's that goes with the life. But well, back then, now, nowadays, they well, learned. He, had, he had a, a, a salesman come to his door. And he thought it was a hitman from the Colombians, and he chased him down the street and killed him. It was an innocent guy that just happened to come to his door. So that's the paranoia when it started setting in. Heavy paranoia started setting in at that time. Well, do you think at that time he knew that he was a hunted man? Yeah, and and, and then or 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 he knew the way it comes to you. Yeah, but he just had no idea it was going to be the guys that he loved and trusted that wow. were. Gonna- Shame yeah. on the ignorance. Shame on the ignorance because we know who's coming, right? And I always wondered about this because, okay, so here you got Castellano. He he orders the hit. He wants him out of the way. He wants the male gone. So he orders the hit, and he gets the Gemini twins near him. But the thing is, this was right before Castellano really started having issues with John Gotti. So I always wondered. What would it cost? Do you think Castellano made a wise move taking this guy out and kind of losing his protection there? Because John Gotti feared DeMeo. So, you know, was it a good move? How bad did that move cost Castellano to take out DeMeo? It might have cost Castellano his life. Yeah. It's hard to say. And, and because if it was. Because if it was, if he was walking down the block instead of Tommy Bellotti, they might not have approached him. But yeah. they were going to trial, but that's a different story. But, you know, I don't know. You could have a whole different uh, rewrite of history here. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And, and you know, you when you think about it, though, uh, we can always question the moves. But I'm sure at that time, Castellano wasn't thinking that he was going to run all the, into all this trouble. No, That's you're thinking at the time. You're thinking at the time. Just like any business, you're thinking uh, your CEO or a, or a uh, director of operations are thinking at the time what to do right there. I think I think it was uh, the way it went down was was correct. I think it had to happen. I think a lot of people benefited from the way it went down. But yeah, I think you're right with you when you say you know if it was the other guy there, would they have gotten to Castellano? I don't. They might not have. They might not have. And and you know. I think once he chased think, that, he real quick, him. I think he, I think he took down his, how do you say it? his bouncer? <laughs> I guess you could say, I think Castellano took down his bouncer. Yeah. And a guy that feared him and respected him and uh, a guy that John Gotti respected. John Gotti had a killing crew around him and he had a hell of a killing crew around him, but so did DeMeo. And just to think that that one family had those two crews it's pretty incredible. I mean, those were two killing crews. But th- but this type of, uh, you know, killing went along with the life back then, just as general as uh, having a poker game. It's just just as normal as having a poker game was going out and clipping somebody. There's bodies everywhere for 20 years, 
Well, in the eighties and well, the seventies, eighties, and the early nineties. Nineties, yeah, I saw it. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it was insane. In the early nineties, in the early nineties, you had the Russians going to war. Everybody, and everybody was fighting with each other. But the eighties, when you think about the eighties, oh my god, oh my gosh, oh my I mean, god. the city was on fire, and it makes you think: what would have happened if Giuliani didn't come along? I mean, Giuliani basically came along and and you know, went after all these guys. I know. And, and what happens if a guy like Giuliani doesn't come along and goes after the mob to take them down? You know, you wonder, right? Would Castellano have gotten hit if he wasn't on trial? Who who knows? Who knows, man? It's crazy. It's all a mystery, but it is our history. So well, well, Tommy, I'd like to ask you this question. You're you're a big Gotti supporter because the Gotti's helped you when you needed a job. Right. They got you an, a union job. Am I correct there? Yeah, well, not I didn't get in the union, but they got me. They got me work. Okay, so I respect the fact. I actually refused a union job because I know what goes along with it. But they did really, really help me. Yeah, and and, uh, and how long did you have this job? That when, once they got it for you, as long as I wanted to have it, I could have worked. And it was a it good was paying up, job. I take it. That was up to me. It was at night. I was working probably twenty-two hours a day to put food on my table. I was on parole probation, all kinds of things, and uh, whatever Tommy needs, because he, he went away, he did his time, he didn't say a word, uh, let's, let, let's let the kid earn. So they they did help me out. And this was in the middle of Sammy going bad. Yeah. Cool. So I'm a, I'm a fan, I'm a fan, I gotta tell you, I'm a fan. And so what do you think now of Sammy, uh, the way he's repaired his image? I would just love to sit down with him for 10 minutes. From my aspect, my questions. So you would like to have an interview of him? Well, I'll sit down, interview, talk 10 minutes. You know, his show is great. We're all going to watch it. There's no doubt about it. We're going to watch it. It's what we do, right? It's our obsession, so to speak, I guess. It's what we love, right? So we're going to watch it. We're going to watch all these guys. But uh, I want to get into the nuts. I would love to get into the nuts and bolts of it. Like, why did you come here? And testify against our guy. Why did you not just go against JG? We called him JG. Why didn't you just go against JG and uh, testify against him? Why are 36 guys and everybody around them decimated? And wasn't he responsible for taking Joe Watts down? 36 guys. I don't even, I, the list is, it's a laundry list. So, so I would. You, you interview the way you interview. Tom Lavecchia interviews the way Tom interviews, and I appreciate it. I love it. I enjoy it. It's a different perspective, right? Yeah. It's heartfelt differently, right? Without a doubt. To me, it's more of hits home type of thing where I would love to have some questions answered. But well, that, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. working very hard to have that happen for myself, but we'll, we'll see. Unfortunately, Sammy has a fee that he charges for interviews. Yeah, well, I'm not going for that garbage. Yeah, and and they're now, pretty, they're, they're pretty Lee, strict about that. Lee, so. listen, 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 Lee. If the fee yields you cash, what's the problem? I see yeah. no problem. With, it's an investment. It's like buying investment property, right? If oh, you well, have yeah. to pay and you could earn that back through whatever means we make on here on the YouTube, What's the problem? I have no, yep. no problem. Oh, and the good news, people. Just so you do know, uh, I am working with a with a streaming service. Uh, I'm, I'm I can't get into the name right now, but the advertisement will start pretty soon, and then we're going to take off from there. You know, it's a surprise because they came to me and they talked to me, and I was surprised. They went and looked at these other shows. They said they liked the way I that I did interviews. And, um, you know, it's kind of funny because people said to me, why do you interview Jimmy Calandra? Why do you interview John A. Light and stuff like that and Gene Barillo? But the fact of the matter, this company, that's what they looked at. The fact that their attitude is the same. Anybody deserves to be interviewed. Interview and, uh, and bring in bring in viewers. What It's a business. And, and the advantage you have when you pay for a, when you pay someone for an interview, you can ask them really hard questions because they're not just going to turn off the phone and leave. Then they don't get paid. 
But when you're paying someone for an interview, they got to stay there and take tough questions. But I've, inter I've interviewed John A. Light where I got nervous because I thought John A. Light would jump off. He had phone trouble. John A. Light always has phone issues when he does interviews. So I was nervous that John A. Light was going to shut off his phone and just say, oops, I lost service and disappear. But, but the one thing is when you're paying someone for an interview, they don't collect their fee if they jump off. I mean, wow. and that's that's, that's, a big, that's a big difference. Oh, my God. That's great. You know, that's why, you know, when you sit down and ask Sammy tough questions, the first thing I would ask Sammy is about the Alan Kaiser murder. That's going to be the first thing I would talk to him. About. You know, a lot of you guys are sensitive about that topic, right? And uh, rightfully, I'm not. So, rightfully so. That doesn't jump into my brain immediately. But I would probably put that on my list because people would want to hear that. Many, many people would want to hear that, right? Oh, because there's two different versions of the story. There's this version that Sammy gave with the show. And then there's the version that he gave to the FBI. So which one of those versions are true? He's watching his story to meet his narrative, to get his viewers. He's going to get it. He's going to do well with this. It's a fact. His name is Golden in this, in this I guess you could say, drama, right? Uh, genre, right? So he's going to do it. It's going to happen. He's not going to have any issues. But yep. uh, when you press him with the real stuff, that's what people would love to hear. And, and they probably would not stop following him. They just want to know what's what. He would do better, actually, my opinion. I, and I, listen, I'm, I'm new to all of this stuff. But I think he would do great if he really answered about the nuts and bolts of the situation and when he went bad and this, that, the other thing. I think. Because then it's all out there. He's watching it and posting it, right? You think so? Yes, without a doubt. Uh, perpetual motion. I'm sorry. I just put you on a uh, five minute timeout. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to get rid of one of uh, the simps that were in here for uh... Rob Lito. I would. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can barely pay for chicken cutlets. But yes, it's an investment. Sure, you should pay. Absolutely, you should pay for an interview if you get a return on it or an eventual return on it. Property exactly. takes a little time to get investment money back, right? Once you do, it starts flowing. So if Lee or Tom or anybody else wants to pay for an interview, who gives a shit? Who are you to criticize? Who is anybody to criticize? That's an investment. Oh, in your well, without a doubt. I heard that uh, that actor, uh, the actor that got, went to jail that played in um, Bronx Tale. Uh, yeah, Lilo. Lilo. His fee was $150. I mean, if he has a fee of $150, I don't know what to say. You would figure that it would be more than that, but that's that was his fee. You get that back in the cash app, no? What the hell? You're going to get that back. People will want to see that. I'm not a big fan of his. No I way. do know we hung out back in the day. Uh, we have a similar appearance back then. Maybe looking at me right now, you can't tell it, but we had a resemblance back then when he did Bronxdale. We were both hanging out in the same nightclubs, so we were break balls. It would be at one end of the bar. I would be at the end of the end of the bar, and we would just break balls with people, sending drinks back and forth. So I did hang out, and uh, we hung out in the same places in Jersey, not out in New York, in Jersey. Okay, I get, and I want to get back to one thing I was discussing about when DeMeo was shot. They found a chandelier on top of him, and here here's what the story they said about the story. But here's the truth: the story said that uh, the Gemini brothers they they basically hated it that Roy DeMeo would always talk about this damn chandelier and they hated it. So when they killed him, they put him in the car and they went inside and cut the chandelier down and put it on top of him in the back trunk. But the reality was that's not what happened. Roy DeMeo the day before removed the chandelier and put it in his trunk because he wanted to get something fixed on it. And so when they went to put DeMeo's body in the trunk, the chandelier was there. But where did all the chandelier talk come from? What, what was that? What, what it was, was a chandelier that? that used to drive everybody crazy because uh, it was it when you walked into Mayo's house. It was right in the beginning of the ho uh, the hallway, right by the st uh, stairs. So and it was Gordon. Gordon. It was a Gavone type of thing, right? And, and he would drive people crazy bragging about this damn chandelier. So people thought that Testa and them they took the they took it down and they put it on top of his body, you know, as an insult. 
<laughs> and, 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 they, and they put him in there. But the reality is this. It's, it's like the Jimmy Hoffa murder. If you kill somebody, you're not going to waste your time by going in their house and taking down a damn chandelier. You want to get away from that body as quick as you can. It's like the thing with Jimmy Hoffa. Well, we killed him in Detroit and we put him in a trunk and drove him to New Jersey and buried him at the Meadowlands. Do people realize how stupid that sounds? <laughs> I mean, the first yeah. thing you want to do with a body is get rid of it, right? Get rid of it. Be gone, right? Exactly. But I do like I do like the messages uh, some of them send. Not cutting up bodies. That's just fucking barbaric. Sorry about cursing, but that's barbaric. It's just out of control. But Money, you know, I think they, they, Tony Caponegro from over here from Jersey, they had money in his uh, mouth. I think when they, when they, uh, when they found him in the trunk after the Angelo Bruno murder, it's because he was greedy. Yeah. So things like that, I understand the signs, the signals, the, the reasons, the chopping up and all of that. That's a whole other situation, right? So oh, the chandelier was in his trunk prior to him getting clipped? Yes. Yep, it was in his trunk. And, and you know. So people it, thought that it was planted there as a sign of greed? Yeah, they thought it was people saying, fuck you, motherfucker. Fuck you, but you're your damn oh, chandelier. We're tired That's about hearing about your fucking chandelier. We're going to put that fuck. We're going to cut it down. We're going to bring it outside to the car and put it on top of you. So when, when does that come out that, that that wasn't the case 20 years later? Yeah, when people started ratting. Right. You know, and, and right. talking to the FBI and, and giving stories out and, and, and telling wow, the truth about. Wow, wow, that's crazy. Lee, they're asking who is this. Lee, they're asking who is this Tommy Stiggs guy? Who is Tommy Stiggs? Oh, Tommy, why don't you tell them who you are? No, I'm not. The, I'm Tommy Stiggs. Guy from Jersey. <laughs> I'm a guy from Jersey. I was in the life. I went away. My best friend ratted on me. That's it. Pretty basic. I got some good in, I got some good knowledge. I got a little little YouTube page that I'm starting up. Now, your best friend, if I may ask you, can, can I talk to you about that whole incident without you getting rattled? Anything rat you want to talk about, my man? Huh? Anything. Whatever. Okay. So, when your best friend, when you say best friend, was he your best friend in the, your in the life, or was best he best friend, friend in the life? From diapers, best friend. Wow. And and so, how did you find out that he ratted on you? He was working as an agent under me. I had obviously some business going on. He was an agent under me in the gambling business. They were dealing with young kids in high schools, taking action from them, which is not directly linked to me, obviously. I dealt with grown men. Um, uh, they, they have to understand I never cooperated, so I can't give out like names and information in the feed. I never cooperated. I went to jail. I did my time. Just, just so you guys know that I, I don't give out uh, real, real detailed information who I was with, what I did, and who where I was. Okay. Um, so my uh, – where was it? Okay, so I had agents under me, obviously. I grew in the business. I had agents under me. My best friend evidently had people in high school gambling with them. One kid went bad apparently on a $700 bet. Wow. Peep seven hundred dollars took destroyed my life for seven hundred dollars. So this these the kids that were responsible for that money to the agent under me who was my best friend kidnapped this kid, took him to the projects in Newark, worked them over whatever. He ran into a police car, and boom, 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 right up the line. So my friend gets pinched, and. Uh, um, I'm setting up bail. I'm setting up lawyers. I'm setting up everything. I'm sitting on his mother's couch and I'm saying, why is he gone so long? Like, well, he's getting arraigned. We got everything set up. He's there way too long. I got up off his mother's couch. I went back to my house. It's a neighborhood. When you When people say neighborhood, I came from a neighborhood, a real neighborhood like that. Um, I walked back to my house. I called my lawyer and I said, what's going on? He said, give me 10 minutes. He says, uh, he calls me back at 10 minutes. He says, there's a warrant out for your arrest. He's giving them everything from the day you were born. Everything that you guys did together, any things that you committed, anything that you ever did, he's giving it to them. And uh, that's what it ended up being. I, you know, I was charged. They can't, you know, I went on the lamp for a few days, four days. I went down to Atlantic City. I had a friend of mine had a hotel on the outskirts of Atlantic City. 
I was a fugitive for four days, made arrangements to turn myself in. And uh, basically, I was either facing five years for all these charges or take a plea deal to a year in county. And I ended up doing nine months in uh, Essex County jail, Essex, Essex County prison. So the point is, my best friend ratted me out. So I have a hard time with a lot of this stuff where I would love to. It goes back to the semi talk, right? I would love to just. Give me the nuts Have you me. ever talked to your best friend since that happened? Never. Never. What? Okay, say you were in a supermarket and you bumped into him. Well, today, I don't want to go back living in a cage, right? Right. I would never want to be in a cage again. Living in a cage is not fun. And county jail, if anybody will tell you, a year in county jail is like 12 years in state and federal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just not right? in the bad neighborhoods, man. Yeah. Especially yeah. in Newark, right? And uh, oh, Essex County, right? Oh, my God. Right. So... I, 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 nine, I, I, nine months. I, my, I was nine months. So nine months is like doing seven years in, in federal, right? So everybody knows. Everybody knows this. Like Emmanuel Spataro says, Tommy Spiggs had potential to move up the ladder yeah. in the family Gambino kids salute. So a lot of families, a lot of families, not just the Gambinos. I was an associate, which means I didn't belong to anybody. I mingled with everybody in Essex County. You have to understand, everybody's everybody's in the area. So. You could basically pick where you want to go. It's crazy. But how Italian are you? 100% Italian. 100%. Well, that's good to know because you don't see too many 100%ers anymore. That's like a, a no. you know, no. the Irish seem to have mixed with the uh, Italians pretty well, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. No, my father, my father's family is from Salerno. I actually went there for a year, for uh, three months with my father when I was a youth. Uh, my mother's family is from Tiora and Bari, Bares. Tiores and Bares. So I'm Italian. Regardless, I'm Italian. You know, it's, I don't I don't push that. I, you know, I'm so what did you, when I'm not a god home like that. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was my best friend that went bad on I me. Mean, and so when did you when did you uh, Tommy, mean, when did you decide? When did you decide that the easiest way to make good money was illegally? I did not. It wasn't the easiest way. It was a matter of survival. My mother was, uh, I think I'm an old school guy that has some of the situations from the generation before me. Right. Because my mother was, we had no heat. It was, it was a tough, it was a tough upbringing. My father left with his gumar. He never, he never came back. He never paid child support. It was a, it was a tough upbringing. So I did it out of survival, not out of glamour. Not out of Goodfellas movies, what I see. I did it out of survival. I saw a way to survive in it, and that's that's why I went into it. Survival, not glamour. Now, do you consider now your life being together? I mean, being that you're you're out there legally and oh, wow. Then nothing better than waking up in the morning, having a coffee on a stoop, and hearing the birds chirping. Nobody appreciates that. They don't understand what it is to lose it. You know, I spent seven years on the run, uh, literally avoiding the law. And I could say the same thing, being able to, you know, if I get pulled over by cops now, I still get nervous, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's like a thing, you know, you're, you, you're just always scared of them. It's a criminal, Lee, it's a criminal mind. You know, I live in a small Texas town where we literally have a police chief that looks like Sam McLeod with the cowboy hat and everything. And I'm a New York boy. It's a rim hat. Yes. And, and I seen him one day standing out front and some guy came up and was saying, well, the law is this and the law is that. And he looked at him with his cowboy accent and he says, in this town, boy, I'm the law. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit. It's real, <laughs> and, though. It's true. And it was and this guy was the East Coast guy. He came here with his like, I'm a tough ass liberal from the city. I know my rights. And this guy just this cop was like you're about to go to jail if you don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, Crazy. And, and, you know, and, and the biggest trouble I ever got in my life was in one of those little towns. You know, you go to those little towns and you fuck around where their whole law system is totally different. Totally you know, different. I, I've done a lot of bad shit in cities. You know, I never hurt nobody. It was always about money. Listen, it's, money still, 1954. it's still 1954 in some of those towns. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, a lot of people are asking me questions, but this is about 
Well, right you know, what? if you want to answer the question, tell me which I, one to pull up. We're on, we're on your thing right now. We're doing your. No, this is your thing. I didn't expect to interview today, but I didn't really get a chance to interview Tommy. We'll never I'm call it an interview. We'll call it a sit down. We'll okay. call it a chat. We're not interviewing. We're chatting, right? We're comfortable, right? Okay, friends killing friends. Part of every gangster story. The Bugs Gang lost brothers true. to brothers. Most true. stayed loyal. True, true, one hundred percent true. It's your brother that is going to kill you, and he and he takes the oath knowing that. And if you are surprised that it's your brother coming to kill you, you're ignorant, and you should have picked a better pit. Well, in the mob, didn't they have fathers kill sons and sons kill fathers? You know it. It's your best friend walking you in. My own yeah. uncle. My own uncle was ready to take me out in a social club. My own uncle was ready to take me out in a social club. I, I I faced death right there and was able to accept it, ready to accept it. But that's your own blood. It's not coming from a stranger, believe me. And uh, perpetual oh, motion. The mega being. And I like to apologize for perpetual motion. I accidentally what? put you in five minute lockup. And you're one of the best dudes around here, man. I didn't do that on purpose. Okay. Stay in uh, Norway. Stay in Norway. You see that right there? Yep. Unwanted. Oh, and another thing. Someone Lee, said, Lee, Lee, hold on. Do you see that that comment? Stay in Norway. Let's see. Is it up this way? It's 4 30 p.m. Uh, my time here. I, I don't know. Oh, how my it works. God. I'm that far behind already. <laughs> I don't know how it works here, but I uh, see. Can you try to oh, interview Michael Francis? Okay. Lee, if you ever get that, can I? Can I you got questions, man. You, I, I got, got questions, man. I got questions. Hard questions. And why does Sammy Gravano never talk about the kid he killed? Nobody dares to, to ask him. Well, he did talk about the kid he killed, but nobody was asking him about it, and he gave his own version. And when I talked to Sammy, Sammy yelled at me on the phone, and he said to me, he started yelling about the videos I was making. So I felt good because my little shitty show, that he has a monster show, the fact that he's watching it, it just goes to show you, these gangsters don't like when you say bad shit about them. And it doesn't matter how big your show is. They're very sensitive. Would you say that? I got, I got 250 only. I got 250 subscribers. I got nobody. But I would love to pick them apart, nuts and bolts, no questions off limits type of type of sit down. I don't want to say interview. I, I hate the word interview, but sit down. But you see that right there? Lee, if you ever get that opportunity. Oh, yes. You know what to do. Yeah, yeah, without a without a doubt, and, <laughs> and that's one of the things interviewing them on a stronger platform than yeah. interviewing them on this one. Uh, you know, there's questions like I had Jimmy Calandra. Jimmy Calandra got me thirty thousand views on his video, and but the problem with that is I didn't ask him no tough questions. It was my first big interview ever, wow. and and I'm a rookie. I was starting out, and there's well, questions I would love to ask him that I didn't ask him then. That I would ask him now. You gotta be a rookie sometime. You gotta learn. Yeah. It's simple. I'm a rookie to this too. I have no idea what I'm doing here. See, a lot of people don't like Jimmy, but one thing about Jimmy, he gives good interviews. Mm -hmm. You know, and hold on. Can you can you can you uh mute me? I gotta take this call. Can you mute me? Uh let me see here. Yes, I can. Wait, hold on. You're muted. Okay, let's take some more questions here. People, I'm you know I'm sorry I'm behind all reckon all, already. Okay, I reckon Jimmy the Helmet uh, would have whacked Pulley G for his button. You damn straight he would have. And see that's the problem that I have with Jimmy. I said that to Jimmy. I said Jimmy, you would have whacked Pulley G if you were ordered to. And Jimmy goes, No, I would have told him to leave town. Do you really believe that? There's no way that Jimmy would have told him to leave town because if Jimmy told him to leave town, they would have came and they would have whacked Jimmy too. It's that simple. Jimmy the helmet. Well, Jimmy's popular all of a sudden. Okay. Okay. Jimmy the helmet uh, was only allowed to carry a potato gun. <laughs> Jeez. You guys can be brutal if you want sometimes. Uh, Jimmy Clander, a big interview. Uh, listen, people, when Jimmy gives interviews, a lot of people watch them. You know, you may not want to hear that, but they do. You know, 
I interviewed John A. Light. I interviewed him. I interviewed Gene Barillo. But believe it or not, Jimmy Calandra got the most views to this day. I don't know what it is, why that's the case, but it's the case. I mean, I, I have no answer to that. I'm most interested in who told the FBI to bug second floor limit. Okay. Go ahead. Pull me off, Lee. Okay. You okay? I'm good. Okay. Uh, Bill wants to know, I'm interested in who told the FBI to bug second floor living room on Gotti. Who told them? I wonder who the hell told them. Uh... Well, I think that what they did, if you watch the movie, uh, I don't know how accurate the movie was, but they seen the woman coming downstairs when she went shopping and stuff, and they started watching her, and they gave her some kind of vacation or something. And they smart were that's that that's smart law enforcement work. You got to give them the credit on it. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, hey, who's the number one mafia now? Law enforcement. Wow. If law enforcement wants you, they're going to come and get you, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. And they can put anybody away. They can invent any charge they want to invent, and there's nothing you could do. Well, nothing was invented there. I mean, <laughs> they gave it. They gave it a silver platter, basically. But. Well, you know, I'll give you an example. When they came after me, I was looking at two felonies. One of the felonies was kidnapping. And even though they knew the kidnapping felony was bullshit and I would beat it in court, they said to me, oh, we'll take this kidnapping charge and throw it away if you take that other felony. So that was the offer they gave me. And so I said, well, I'm not guilty of that one. They go, well, we'll hold you in jail. We'll hold you on $40,000 bail cash unless you take a plea. So they literally put me in a corner where I had to decide whether I was going to take a plea on a bullshit charge, or was I going to stay in jail and, and wait and not be able to come up with 40 grand cash bail? Not many people have 40 grand cash. And if you want your family to come up with it, that means they got to sell a house or something like that. But that's what the government does. The did you have that problem when the government came after you? Were they, uh, were they good to you or did they just? No, they're not good. Was that Fed or state? Like... That was state. That was the state of Colorado. State, but that was that little town I was telling you about. <laughs> You're guilty. That was a little town. And You're you know guilty. Funny? The judge. You go to trial there. You're guilty. guilty. There's no doubt about it. You know what I found out years later? The judge in my case uh, had he owned part of the prison that was in town. It was a small. Oh my God. It was a, a county prison in this town, and he was one of the owners. These prisons now, a lot of these prisons are owned by private people and yeah. so you've got judges and lawyers investing all this money into these prisons and they get a certain amount of money from the government or the state in this case the state for every prisoner they have in their bed they get money for it I think i'll it tell like you this with mine it was county essex county but i knew i was turning myself in i kind of i kind of had an understanding of how much my bail was going to be so I reached out to some people while I went to Atlantic City for four days. They brought the money from Mulberry Street to New Jersey to my mother's house, put it on the table and set my bail up. I was ready to go. When I turned myself in, I was, should be out in 20 minutes. It's formality, basically, right? Unfortunately, the person that we had um, bringing the bail money had an embezzlement charge from 20 years ago, 20 years prior. So it was a little bit of problem. It got through eventually, but uh, I knew what my bail was going to be. They took care of me. They, I, I have no complaints. I got to be honest with you. I have no complaints about the guys on the street that took care of me. They, they hand delivered money to my mother's kitchen table as she was like in tears. So, you know. You know, I could tell you, I was in jail in San Diego and they let me out because I was running from the warrant in Colorado. So I'm sitting there and, and I'm in Oceanside and I'm sitting with this girl and we're by one of those coffee shops down by the, by the ocean. And all of a sudden two cops came walking up to me and said, you're under arrest because you have a warrant out of Colorado. And these were town cops. I said, what the fuck? And so they arrested me and they sent me down to the San Diego jail in, in San Diego. The county jail's in the middle of the city, wow. literally in the middle of the city. And so they, they sent me down there, and 
I got out on $5,000 bail and then I had to go back for a hearing and they were going to send me, they were going to make me go on my own to uh, Colorado. So when I went back, my, my lawyer walked up to me when I was outside and said, oh, Lee, I just want to let you know they're about to arrest you when you go in there. I'm like, what? I thought I said they're going to let me go back on my own. They said, no, they're going to arrest you. So I said, okay, I got to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom, walked down the steps and walked right the fuck out of the court. <laughs> and I got in my vehicle and took off. <laughs> and that all led to a bunch of trouble once once I got back to Colorado. That so, is great. I did the same kind of thing. They told me my... You know, my my lawyer made arrangements for me to turn myself in, but he said there is an active warrant. They could come to your house at any moment. Or if you're driving down the Garden State Parkway or, you know, JFK, they could come and they could they could lock you up. So I parked my car in somebody's garage <laughs> and we took their car to Atlantic City for four days. But but they, even though you made arrangements in, in my in my in my case, if you made arrangements to turn yourself in. The active warrant is still there. Yeah. So you had an active warrant, but how did they know to come and get you? How did they know it was you sitting on that thing having coffee? What well, someone turned I knew that I got turned in there. Someone, someone turned knew in. I was gonna be there. What you, you kind of you know why? They take charges off for them. So you know how many people do it? You know how many people do it? You know how many drives yeah. when when you when we say when you say how did they know that they were having conversations upstairs? There's so many dry snitches on the street. It's you. You got to be nuts to be involved in that mess. Hey Wayne, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. Uh, we got 141 here, and it's midday, so thank you. Uh, I'm glad to have you guys here watching. Uh, so listen, uh, Wayne says, uh, "Good luck on your show, Lee. I appreciate that, Wayne. I haven't seen you in here before, so if you're new to the show, and people listen, I'm almost at 3,000. I need 140 to get to 3,000." And uh, uh, we had another person here. Uh, he's a scumbag. And he made, the other day, he made a claim that I use bots because he yeah. uses bots. And so my anybody I ever got to join this show has been legal. And I would never use bots. What is because it? If you use bots, YouTube knows you use bots. And here's what happens. when. What is it? Uh, bots are when you buy views and stuff. Oh, I'll give you an example. There's another guy here that has 250 views at night, every night consistently. But here's the weird thing. His chat room barely moves, and he only has 40, 50, or 60 likes. Those numbers are impossible. Those numbers are like the election. When Trump won every county, every bellwether county in the be stream. careful. Be careful. We got a good stream here. You don't want to yeah, get yeah. taken. Well, anyway, these people, <laughs> my people are Trump people. I don't give a I know, but we don't want to get their feet. <laughs> we don't want to get this taken down. This was a good okay. episode. No, they're not going to take this down if I talk about it. All right. That. No, no. Uh, yeah, no, there's certain things. You don't. You can't talk about John Wolf got taken down for talking about the VHX. <laughs> so there's certain things. That's the number one thing that they'll take you down for if you discuss that our race so you those are the two things you really got to stay away from uh politics it's like hey i, 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 I can't do it can't, we can't change anything i can't do politics i, I you yeah. lose me with that uh -huh. yeah okay well if my guest doesn't want politics i ain't doing politics okay <laughs> Uh, Major Lee, awesome. Ten dollars. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Lee, don't I don't want you to consider me a guest. We're chatting here. Huh? We're, yeah, I like you as a guest. Hey, Tommy, you're an interesting guy. Let me tell you Come something. On. But I'm I on board. Guys like, I find board guys board. like I find guys like you, Joe, and even the little guy with the hairpiece. I find you guys interesting, you know, and and so that, that's right. what counts. All right, All right. Yeah, whatever works for you, man. <laughs> Go with it. Well, you know something. You're only as good as the people that come on your show. I guess. I, I I don't even know how to start my first podcast, my man. I got I got my page set up. I don't even know when to pull the trigger. How to just pull do trigger. it? I just know. do it. You know, yeah. you're gonna do good because you have the good right attitude and stuff. You're gonna do fine now, on it. Now, I'm not specific to the genre. I have a lot of different things going on. A lot of different friends that want to come on. I got a I got a lady that that dresses men. So she talks about style. I got an up and coming boxer that's coming on. He's a Carmen S. Mysterious guy around the Raven night. 
His name was Norman Dupont. Yes, he's, he's away. No. The old he's doing life. Olympic club. That yeah, was he's doing wrong. life. Norman Dupont's doing life Is for he? a stupid mistake or what something do do? very stupid. He killed somebody based on. Uh, I don't know if it was a love triangle situation, but he killed somebody. He walked into a place and killed somebody. What is it he with was, the haunts killing people? I mean, look at the one that he, killed the rest. Yeah, I know. He <laughs> was a uh, he was the keeper of the club. All of us that had clubs had a keeper. I had a club. I had a club in Newark. Everybody had a keeper. He was the keeper of the club. He wasn't going to be a made guy. He wasn't. He might have had some business going on, but he killed somebody, and I do not remember the reason he's doing the life. I'd like to ask you a question. When you seen the movie, uh, the Soprano movie that was shot in Newark, what did you think of it? Pretty accurate. You did you believe? Because everybody I know gave it really bad reviews. They, they, well, they don't. They're not from here, so they don't understand. So we relived a lot of the things we did through that move, through that, uh, through that show. The first thing that happened when we got, can you say lockdown here? The first thing that happened when we got locked down, many of us went to watch The Sopranos for a year, <laughs> right? So uh, we it resonates with us. Uh, it's our history here. We know the people. We know Richie DeBoot. We know this one. We know that one. So uh, it was pretty, pretty accurate. Well, that's interesting to say because you're the first good review I heard on it. <laughs> I'm here. I never left here. I'm still here. A lot of the guys we can relate to, maybe not specific to the names, but the characters were on point. We saw them every single day. Well, a lot of people were upset with the Terminator that was running around killing all the Italians and making them look weak. That's the pro that's one of the well, anyway, J James says John Sr. knew FBI was bugging everyone. He handed them everything on a plate. That's true. Didn't John Sr. know, based on that conversation, that he was tapped on, that he would eventually be in jail for life, and he accepted it? He knew it, right? Hey, Regardless you... of that, if that tape, if that was not taped, did he was he out of touch with reality? You cannot well, say he was out of touch I'm with gonna reality. I'm going to get back to that one second. I just got to read this. Did Gene tell you he was going to work with FBS? Are you and him still friends? Why is he going to the dark side? Gazo, I'm going to stay out of that one because I don't know what the hell's going on there last night. The the jerk went on and said that I was involved with. Uh, Forget about it. Forget about I it. Just don't give me time. I just don't want to know. Give, no, don't they, give, they, they, they want to know the answer. I got to give it to them. Uh, yes, you do. Okay. Okay. So, so basically. Don't go too far, Lee. Just quit. Yeah. yeah so basically, uh, the fact of the matter is what Hootie says is what Hootie says. What Gene says is what Gene says, and what I say is me. I don't control those guys. So that's it, you know, people. Okay. Okay. So let's see, James. Uh, yeah, wh yeah. What is okay, that? Here's my opinion about that whole thing with John Gotti. Wait, John okay. Gotti's your typical gangster. We, we have to go back to this. Can you put this one up that James said about the uh, Sopranos and Many Saints so we get back to it? Oh, wait, I didn't even know there was one here. 4.47 p.m., James Jameson. Tommy's talking about Sopranos and Lee's talking about there's many saints in Newark. I just want to, let's go where you're going and then go back to that. Well, I'm not even near my thing. Oh my God. Don't worry about it. I got yeah. it in my brain. We're good. Go ahead. Okay. I want you to, what did he, what did he ask you? Well, he said that you were uh, talking about the, I, I was talking about the Sopranos. You were talking about the many saints in Newark. I don't, I don't know if that's true. No, I was talking about the many saints of Newark that was shot. Yeah, uh, the one that was shot. In oh, Newark. you were talking about the many saints of Newark and not the Soprano series. No, the Soprano series was phenomenal. I mean, you I was talking, talking about the many saints of Newark. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah. And maybe yeah. I gave the wrong answer. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, it, I watched it. it just, nice. The biggest complaint was it made Italian men look really bad, like they brutalized women, and you know, that was hard. Killed their fathers and. You know, he ruined and, it. you know, it, it, it didn't have a good look. He, he ruined it. He ruined what could have been fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, that's what sucks. The Sopranos was such a great show. And to so come to, to end it like it's like Dexter. I'm a so big Dexter fan. And then they had this new season of Dexter comes on and it sucked, you know, and it's like the ending sucked. They killed off Dexter and it just sucked. 
I'm sorry. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I misunderstood that. Uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. I thought. I thought Lee was talking about The Sopranos. Many Saints in Newark. Uh, I, I watched it home, and then I actually went to the movie theater alone, and got in the zone. And uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Hey, you know what starts tomorrow? The uh, the final year of the Ozarks. I don't know if you people like the Ozarks. It's a great show. Have you ever seen it, Tommy? No. Oh, you it's on uh, Netflix and it's a fantastic show. And if you if you're one of those guys that like to sit down and get involved with a show over a period of time, they got Listen, three seasons and now they're coming with the fourth seasons. I got then, severe, severe ADHD. If I'm it's not on my topic and I don't grab it right away, I I, I can't I can't well it's it. kind of gangster. It's kind of gangster, so you might like it. It's about you know drug dealing and you got it. you know, it's it's pretty interesting show. What is okay, this? Thank you for the compliment. Tommy and Lee have good chemistry together. I appreciate that. That's why I, I asked Tommy to Look, be on. I, I I am not loyal to anybody specific. I oh, enjoy this on. whole thing. You hurt me. I enjoy family. this whole thing. I enjoy it. Everybody that does it, I do enjoy it. Even the nonsense, I enjoy it. I dismiss it, but I enjoy it. So I would sit on Lee's show, Tom's show. Joey's show, Vinny's show, and just talk like this. I don't want to be interviewed. I love to chat. I hope you enjoy this, Lee. I, oh, I without know. a doubt. Okay. So, so we see we see here Carmen S., which I, I don't know Carmen S. Stiggs was lending money and was on the hook for that money with a guy that owned a taxi company. Yeah, that's not true. The captain, Tony Pizza, claims to follow people. Yeah, I don't put anything past Tony Pizza. We all like John Wolf. He was strange in his own way, but John Wolf was a fun guy, you know. And and we, miss John, and we miss John Wolf. They're gonna go away. They're just gonna drift away. Okay, uh, Big Boy Blue, you'd be a moron to be a. <laughs> I agree with you, but he doesn't want politics, so I'm gonna keep it out of there. Yeah, uh, Trumpy got Scottish granny. Okay. <laughs> It's my man, but I I don't talk about it. Shaolin, you remind me of Planned Parenthood. Oh my God, dude! Come on, don't put that in there. Just pass through, <laughs> Lee. I'm pass through. You, no, these these are loyal, hardcore Lee Lee people that I love. I'm but not I afraid know. of drama. I'm not. He's saying I'm afraid of drama. I'm not afraid no, of drama. No, I go toe to toe with anybody. I'm not afraid of drama or anything. No, I I don't you got to understand what Tommy's saying. He doesn't want to talk about politics. He wants to talk about the show. I respect that. When your guests come on, you got to respect. Well, Tommy's been on here with me before. I talk about Big ZD. I I'd rather not just waste time with the politics. It's, oh, it goes nowhere. ZD. Nobody wins, right? Big ZD. I haven't had a good <laughs> Big ZD. <laughs> I'll talk about Big ZD before I talk about politics. I'm not afraid of. So when's the last time you had Big ZD? Yeah. Well, uh, we make it, you know. So you, know. you do. Do you put yeah, the meatballs man. on it? It's a normal thing. You know what I mean? Do you make? Do you like what your baked ziti with meatballs or sausage? I like it with nothing in it, just the mozzarella. Oh, you got you know something though. Put it in the oven with a little mozzarella. I'm a half-ass vegetarian. I, I'm not a big fan of meat, right? Ah. So I make it. Uh, I make it that way. I went for a calzone the other day, and the guy's making calzone, and I go, "Does it have ricotta cheese in it?" He looks at me like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" I'm like, "Does it have ricotta cheese in it?" He goes, "What's that?" I'm like, you don't have ricotta cheese in your calzone? He goes, no, we have mozzarella cheese in it. I, then I said to him, it's not a calzone then. You got to have the ricotta cheese in it. Calzone you know? needs ricotta. We call it ricotta. Calzone needs yeah. ricotta. And uh, stromboli, no ricotta. Yeah, you, yeah, and I said, how did I say it? Ricotta. <laughs> That's okay. Well, it I doesn't put, matter. I you know what it out of that damn word. Hey, you know when it becomes pot cheese? You ever hear of pot cheese? Oh, yeah. I love pot cheese. Well, pot cheese is ricotta put into a pot and mixed with a couple of spices and then hit with the hit with the hand blender. Oh. And then it becomes pot. Ricotta is pot cheese seasoned. So, you, you know, Tommy, let me ask you this question. Like our age, we were blessed because we were around a lot of Italians that loved to cook, especially the old timers, especially the widow. Went, the, you remember back in the day, everybody... All the widows had their black dresses on, but they loved to cook. That's dying. So food in general is not like it used to be. You know, that great, like a pasta vizool, 
Yeah. Or you, you don't yeah. have that no more. I and, do it. I actually make it. I do all that. I live alone. I'm single. I'm divorced, unfortunately. But I do all of that stuff. I live alone. It's very old-fashioned. Where I do live, Essex County, is still... You seem like an interesting guy. I'm surprised you're single. I was definitely... I'm divorced. I was married. I got two right. kids. I'm divorced. But... I got a lady friend, you know, I keep company, but I say lady friend, that sounds like I'm 80 years old, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to know this guy named Whip and he was a 50 year old single guy and he used to go to his girlfriends every weekend for about 25 years. Yeah, man. I, told him, I said, why don't you marry her? He goes, because I work all week, I'm with her all weekend and I come back to my apartment. They're great. And the best way to ruin a relationship is move in together. You know, for the first time in 40 years, I'm single. I've always been in a relationship and I'm having so much fun right now because like, I, could, I could do this. If Better I was in a relationship right now, I'd have some woman over my shoulder going, don't you ever get off that damn computer? Or, oh. like, or I don't like sharing my remote control. No, nope. I mean, this is my, this is, this is my new woman right now. The way it is when you leave it is the way it is when you returns. What's I've been married. Woman? I've been married four times. I feel uh, that. So, you know, it's the yeah. institution that'll put you in one. I'm not doing that again. You know, it's funny. My two longest relationships weren't marriage. You know, they were both 10 years and they were living right. with somebody. Because you weren't. Oh, and, living with and, my, and my marriages were all short. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's kind of funny when I think about it, though. I, I don't. I don't think I would do I, I can't say. I don't think I would do it again. Right now, I enjoy my life. I can do this. Nobody's nagging me. I could go next door, meet my friends for happy hour. I can go across the street. You know, I live in an area where it's like uh, old fashioned, where I can walk everywhere. I park my car, pizzeria, okay. bar, restaurant, games at one place, this, that. Yeah, you know, I could, you know what I mean? So I'm enjoying that. Hey, guys, uh, wait, seven perpetual, $7. Here's. Those begging strips I promised your dogs. <laughs> did you see the video I did the other day, Tommy? About Which being one? homeless in the car? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I drove the car around and I'm driving on the back roads here in Texas. It's oh it's God. amazing how many responses I got to that. It was just a three minute video. But you know, <laughs> it's and and then I've gotten so many remarks about it. People <laughs> people were like, Lee, thank you for doing that. I needed a good laugh. Oh my god, that was great. Yep, and so uh, unemployed. Uh, uh, she put up, uh, his car broke. His heart hurts, and it's his ex-wife's birthday. <laughs> you are nuts. But that's good, right? We laugh, right? Yeah, because we actually have someone driving around in this car making a lot of fucking money. There's no okay. reason he should even be in his car with all the money. End, man. It all comes to an end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, but you know what? That's his thing. If people give him money, God bless him. That's how I look at what, it. Because I'm not forcing works. Nobody, Yeah, I'm not forcing anybody to give him money. It ain't my money. And if people have that much money to give away, bless him. Whatever, uh, today, hustle, well, whatever came, hustle works for you is what you do. That guy blocked me a long time ago. <laughs> and I came on today. I didn't expect to. I, I, I've been doing well today with the, with the chats and stuff. I didn't expect that. You never know when you come on here. What do, what do we got here? Chats, people, likes, what? Yeah. Oh, I, I can't see it. I can't see it. So. Well, we got 150 in the house, which is very good for this time of day. Welcome and, to us. Uh, and plus Tony's on when I came on. And so when you go come on with somebody else and if you could do 150, that's really good. What know? about likes and all of that stuff? Oh, uh, I can't see any of that stuff right now. But people. There's 150 the people watching. You got to smash the like, guys. Hit that yeah. Like. See, that's my problem. I never say that shit. Oh, I don't give a shit. I'll say it. And I never asked for money. <laughs> okay. We Lee, that one. Lee, we talked about this with Joey the other night. I mean, Joey talked about this the other night. He feels funny about the money part. Why? Yep. Why? Yep. We, you, we're, we're here, right? And nobody in the store waiting tables or, or making drinks at the bar and making money. So if somebody wants to give me money on my cash app, on my my page, what's the problem with that? And, and so you know, don't, don't ever feel that you're pressuring people for money and don't feel guilty about taking it because you're putting time in, you're giving them content that they like. It's better than a movie. The problem I have with it is when you have somebody on and they start complaining they're not getting money. Well, that's bullshit. That's garbage. Yeah. Then they yeah. got to go. They yeah. And they will go away. They will go away. You have two people that do that. It's like, well, we, don't, 
listen, anytime somebody helps you out with money, it's a bonus. We got tiny shows here. You know, people like Jake Paul and stuff, they make tens of thousands of dollars every day because they got 10 million followers. I mean, we, I only have 3000 and anything I get is a bonus to me and God bless you. Like, like I, uh, thank you for putting this up. Lee needs a water heater. His car broke, his heart hurts. This is a new one. His ex-wife has a birthday coming up. Please donate. Thank you very much. Look, Don't Lee, take care of me. That's my favorite. Lee, I work, I work a regular square nine to five job, seven to three job. I do some odd jobs in construction on the weekends when I can to grab a few dollars. I live paycheck the four days before paycheck. This is my life at the moment. If I can somehow earn a few dollars on here, I'm not ashamed. There's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. Why should there be shame? If people like what we're delivering and they're willing to give you a few dollars, there's no shame in it, man. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, no, and no content creator should feel that way. I would tell, but content creators, if you're listening to me, don't beg for it. That's It'll what, come. That's when you got to question your manhood. 100%. I mean, you, you know. Beautifully people, said. If people want to. Beautifully said. That's 100% correct. If people want to give you something, God bless them. But yes. don't go, don't go there and go, oh, I'm not making no money. So I don't know if this is even worth coming on. Well, I don't do this for money. I do this because I enjoy doing it. You enjoy I it. Interest in people. I would have never met you, Tommy. Right. I would have never met Joe. I would have right. never met you, yeah. you know, it's just so many uh people that I've met that I so they said, so so I learned years ago, people said to me. A man that loves what he does never works a day in your life. So if you're enjoying this and you're getting the fruits of your labor, God bless. It's very simple. You're giving out a product. You're putting your time in. If they enjoy it and they want to give you a few dollars, that's fantastic. Who um, can criticize? But when you ask for it, that's a problem. Major, I will go out and sheetrock a room before I would ask somebody. Majorly, for I don't know what Harvester of the Sorrow is banned. I don't even know what it is. Maybe if you want to fill me in on that, I would appreciate it. I, I don't want to sound stupid, but I just don't know what it what it is. So if you guys want to let me know, as long as it's not something that's going to get me in trouble, say whatever you Lee, want. Let's get back to let's get back to the original topic because I have a question. Yes. Who was uh, who were who were these guys made under? Who was uh, Nino Gaji made under, and his uncle and all of them? Who were they made under? Roy DeMeo, who, who were they made under? Who who made these guys? Uh, was it Paul Castellano? Um, I believe it was. If it wasn't Paul Castellano, wouldn't it be? Uh, it would be. Uh, Carmine would have made them. Carlo or Neil with Neil. Car right. Carlo would have made them or Neil would have made them, right? Yeah, probably. I mean, who I would guess Carlo, but I, I don't know. Carlo was a little more, how do you say, conservative? Yeah, but wasn't it harder to be made under Carlo than it was? Yeah, but I mean, it was conservative yeah. in his way. So Paul was a little more greedy. So I'm going to think it was Paul. Paul made him and wanted to, and killed him. Mafia scope. Thank you. I isn't Paul it, made him and killed isn't him. that amazing? You make somebody, then you kill him. We're disposable in that life. There's no doubt about it. So I think uh, one of the content creators said that, and he was 100% correct. You're disposable. For the most part. Depends on what family, but for the most part. Yeah, Carmen S. He said he met, met me a few years ago. Hope yeah. it was a pleasurable experience meeting you, my man. I don't I don't know. Taxi company, I was never involved in the taxi company. I had a social club on Roseville Avenue in Newark and Second Avenue. But taxi company, I was never obligated to anybody in the taxi company. Anthony says, Lee, why didn't the Sorelli lady give the boys at the Raven Night a heads up about the gas leak and the free vacation? I blame her in a way, you know, you know, you, who knows? Maybe she did. You know, sometimes gangsters don't listen. <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> she could have said something to them and they just ignored her. Nobody knows. You don't know. But if you listen to those tapes, the one thing that those tapes should tell you that all gangsters are self-absorbed about themselves. They, they, they got mental illnesses, a lot of them. And they don't, they talk about everybody. They're like wash women. It's a horrible life. Yeah. they Very, very hard for me being a, a guy with no, um, 
vices, I guess you could say. I had no vices. I had no gambling addictions, no drug addictions. Uh, very, very hard for someone like me to see what they were doing to each other. It's crazy what they do to each other. It's crazy. Or even to me, close family. But it's uh, it's interesting. Oh, here's a great question. Tommy and Lee, Goodfellas or Casino? Both fantastic. How, how do you even compare? No, oh, man. Both fantastic. Goodfellas was pretty, pretty accurate. And and Joe Casino Pesci. was a story of Vegas, and I guess that was pretty accurate for what it was. Uh, for what it was, uh, very, you know, good, very you know, well done, both of them. You know, it's funny if you met Joe Pesci in real life; he's nothing intimidating about him at all. But if Pesci, you see him in these movies, he, he comes up. Well, he grew up twelve blocks from where I am right now, Joe Pesci. Harrison he Street, Belleville. He, grew and up he understands the life, right? He understands the life. Grew up around the same neighborhood I'm yeah. from. I hear that he was a gambler. And, same uh, neighborhood I'm from, same type of upbringing, same type of experience, same people, actually, and he's much older than me. So we were in the same circles, different times. I don't know him. I never met him, but he grew up in the neighborhood I'm from. You know, were you here when we did the, I don't know, when I did the show? No, I don't think so. I did a show on, uh, no, actually, it was a video, but I did a show on um when the brothers were killed from casino and put in a cornfield, uh, that whole thing was pretty incredible because when they put them in the cornfield, they didn't think those bodies were ever going to be found. And it just so happened that farmer went over there and found the hole. If that farmer waited a couple more weeks, that hole would have disappeared. Because it tells there. you how bright they really are. Doesn't that tell you something? <laughs> they put, they, they buried them at the edge of the farm Come instead on. of in the middle <laughs> Forget you know, about that. You got to incinerate. Yep. And those guys got horrible beatings. And in the movie, it shows them being beaten there. They weren't beaten there. They were beaten in the basement. They were killed and they were dragged over there, put in the car, and they took the bodies over there. It the shows you how smart they really are. You got to incinerate. <laughs> you yep. can't, you can't leave parts around. It's not going to. That's why the guys that killed Jimmy Hoffa did a great job. They didn't play around. They killed him. They probably took him to one of those plants where they make the cars and threw him in one of those hot ass vats. And they're all along the they're all along my corridor here. So it's probably Jersey guys. Yep. So you know that was the perfect hit the way they got rid of him. You know, but when you no, kill a guy, I guess he graduated from the same high school I graduated from, Belleville High School. Oh, he did. Yeah, it's from Belleville, from my town, from my hometown. These are local guys, Frankie Valley, Frankie Vincent, Joe Pesci. A lot of guys are from here. I didn't, Bill Jordan, I did not know the, the new Ray Donovan movies out. I got to watch that. Uh, I don't know if you watch Ray Donovan, another great show. Uh, Jake LaMotta, that was a great, great, great. Well, Joe Pesci, you have to remember in Casino, he was a character actor. In, yeah. in, Good, in Goodfellas, in Goodfellas, he was home. He felt at home. You could see it in his acting. And you know the thing about Goodfellas is the acting was so good by so many people. Incredible. I mean, just everybody just played their part. Nobody Robert gets an arrow. They can't I mean, say anything that that was well done, beautifully done. I like. Good, I thought. I think that probably Goodfellas was better than Casino. Just a different story. Just a different story. Yeah. Remember those guys were used as character actors. They're not homegrown guys. In Goodfellas, these guys are from this area. Yeah. So they're just, they're not even acting. They're, they're grabbing a suit out of their closet and going to a shooting scene and just <laughs> shooting the shit, basically. I was telling <laughs> somebody, I remember when I worked at, when I worked near the garment district in New York and you would walk down the garment district and you see gangsters standing on the street. You knew they were gangsters just by looking at them. There was like no ifs, puts, or anything. They would have the shirts on, the pants, the hair combed back. They had the whole thing going. And but and that's that's a little interesting because a lot of my friends are square guys, and we all dress kind of kind of clean cut, nice, you know, and may look it, but you may be surprised. One of them may be a detective. One of them may be a judge. But we're all from Italian descent. So one thing about Ita Italians or American Italians, we do, we are in tune with, with uh, looking right, style, not, not big names, just looking clean cut. So today's day, it could be mistaken. 
back then you kind of knew you could pick them out, right? Yeah. Because they didn't have long hair and you know, this and that the other thing. But today, or the last 20 years, guys, guys, you know, most most guys dress pretty good and they can be mistaken. I'm telling you, one's a judge, one's a prosecutor, one's a one's a cop, one's a lawyer, one's a doctor, one's a gangster, one's this, one's that. But, I think the, I think the guys that I seen in the garment district were more like the soldiers, and they yes. you, you know they weren't the like top guys back then. You could pick them out, Lee, without a doubt. I used to we used to jump the train from over here in Jersey, and go out to Forty Second Street. We weren't supposed to be there. We were twelve or thirteen years old. You know, we jumped on a train. We're going to the peep shows and shit like that. You know, that's what it was back then, right? That's what we did early eighties, right? That's yeah. about that time, right? So I was 10, 12, 14, whatever I was. And a guy from here would talk to a guy from there and say, watch out. There's a group of six kids coming from Jersey. That are, you know, they're going to be bopping around. We were going to a freaking peep show. And they knew we were there. Mm -hmm. They would get a call. You get out of here or be careful or whatever, you know. So very, very weird, that area that you're talking about. You know what I mean? Well, I grew up in that area and I worked in that area. And the one thing I, I remember when you got off the, the, the subway and walked to the top step, it smelled like piss, but it was a different type of smell. Exactly. It was like the smell of evil, but, but to unfortunately, us, it was fun. But to and, us, yeah. but to us kids, 13 years old, jumping on a train in Newark, getting off on 42nd Street oh. or wherever, wherever it took us off, we, that smell was like cotton candy. Yes, exactly. And people don't get it. It's like no. when you when you went to that old times, like if you watched Taxi with Robert De Niro, that was shot in Times Square. That was Times Square. That's exactly wow. when I was in Times Square when that movie wow. was shot. That's a crazy time. And you know, and 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 that's just how it was. And I would have done worse, but I got a job in a pizza place owned by a Greek guy on the corner of Avenues of America, and he let me sleep in the basement. I had no place to sleep. You Let know? me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Have you been a guest ever yet? Huh? Have you been a guest on a podcast yet? Oh yeah. Yep. So it's a whole different, it's a whole different flow, right? Yeah, it is. Yep. It, it definitely, without a doubt, because you you got to follow that person and respect their show, and you know sometimes uh, I may not like it, and then there's some people that I feel very comfortable with. Interesting, interesting. You know, everybody, everybody's different. I'm learning. I'm learning this. I'm learning this stuff. Grant, uh, he keeps telling Lee not to talk about uh, no politics. Well, you guys are so polit political, man. I just don't talk politics. You, you I, I go away. You start talking about po politics, you lose me. Now, if you don't want me here, that's, I don't care. They no, want you here. But uh, no, no, they, not you specifically. In general, yeah. you want to chase me away? Start talking about politics. I just cannot do it. Hey, quit talking about food. You're hey, making well, me food is all right. Food is good. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Yeah. This FBS is told Gub Smoke, <laughs> Gub Smoke, about the time he had sex with Shanna and her identical twin. You say said yeah, Gun Smoke. How can you tell them apart? Easy, said FBS. Her brother has a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> That was worth reading. That Taxi. was worth reading. Danny DeVito was great. Taxi with Danny DeVito was good. And he was also good in uh, Jersey something. He did something in Jersey. Danny DeVito and Joe Piscopo. I forgot. Wise Guys. Oh, remember that movie? That was a funny movie. Long, long time ago. Horribly done, but, you know, you got to laugh at it. You know what I mean? Oh, some of those movies back then were, yeah. they were bad. But yeah. you know what's funny? Do you ever watch any of those movies that we laughed at back then and realize how horrible they were? Oh, horrendous. I mean, if you watch them now, like a Rodney Dangerfield movie, they were so. Well, how do you? Made. You can't shut it off. No, you gotta, no. you gotta feel it through. You gotta go through with it, right? Yeah. By, but it's a matter of, it's a matter of you just have to go. You have to, you have to suck it up and watch through it. You, you can't disrespect. Okay, it. check this out, Lee. Did you pay your vet bill in Waukesha? You stiffed the vet for thirty. No, 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 no. I want to answer this question. I want to answer this no, question. Business. No, I want to answer this question. Yes, when you looked at that, I did. But, you know, here's the thing. It saved my dog's life. Was it worth oh. it? Yes, it was. Okay. 
So, so yeah. wait a minute. So are they thinking that you're a squeaky clean guy or I'm a squeaky clean guy? You never stuck anybody? No, no. These are the dirt bags that are friends with FBS and they no, go out and look. No, no, let me finish. They go out and look for things in your past. That's what they you literally do. I don't do that to nobody. I don't look at people's past. That's what they do. Right? They gotta, you know, they gotta get that's busy. That's they gotta I'm find doing. other things to do. Guys that do that, if they went to prison or jail, would have to ship it right. out. Done. These are the low lives. Done. You're good, Lee. Don't even worry about that garbage. No, man. I don't. I don't worry about that. I laugh at it. Lee thinks he was a gangster. His crime. This is the same person. His crimes are all running out of bills. Sorry. Walling, hey guys, let me ask you something. Let him go. Wait, if you see dirt bags like this in here, block them. That's what I have you here for. If you they're here because it, you got their attention, I think you can't do thing. it. I'm gonna have to fire new wrenches. Especially Listen, I think it's a good thing you got their attention. That means they're in tune. You win. Oh no, that's no, that's yes. stuff. No, that's just these are just FBS low lives, especially that person. There's a community of people living who live in vehicles, although they modify vehicles for everyday living. He should join a community or just Welcome. be one of those people who live. You know something? That's right. There are people that do that. Uh, uh, you know what's really big now is okay. people taking these little vans and turning them into like little little apartments and literally driving all over the country. Whatever works for you. Whatever works for you to get through life in a castle in a tower, in an apartment, in a car, whatever you're okay with, go with it. Who's criticizing? Nobody. Funny pizza lost his job. <laughs> no shit. No one's Begging for money is a crackhead trait just because MF -er is sober. It doesn't mean that he's lost his old ways. If someone well, you and I, you and I would see that. You have experience. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You could pick him out quickly, right, Lee? Just like I yeah. can, right? Without a doubt. Yeah. Exactly. Just sure. by looking at somebody. Not necessarily call him out, but pick him out, right? Jesse, thank you, man. I appreciate that. That means a lot from Jesse. When yeah. I appreciate that, Jesse. Okay, and Mafia Scope, once again, thank you. That was very nice of you. You see how this chat went? We started with a good topic. An interesting topic, right? Yeah. We went into a few of me, a few of you, this, that, the other thing. Good chat, good topic. It's going back and forth. I think that's what this is all about. And, you know, I want to bring up one quick thing about uh, uh, it, that we should talk about. Uh, Roy DeMeo somehow got lucky and became a president of a bank. This is kind of funny when you really think about it. He actually became a president of the bank and he bankrupted the bank. And can you imagine that who the hell was running these banks that said, we're going to okay. let Roy DeMeo be president oh. of this bank? There's a backstory. I mean, and Hold they, on. There's a backstory. There's a backstory. Yeah. But the he, person in control of giving a person that position was indebted to somebody. Right. That was not because he went to apply for a job. Somebody in the back room in that bank had a habit or a gambling debt. It could have been 10000 It could have been 300000 They got him in there. Yeah. They sure did. It was all set up. And, and that's what they worked. said. He drained that. He drained that bank dry, and it went yeah, out he, of there. Well, that was all set up. He didn't go, when he drained the bank dry. They got their money back. That's how it goes. That's how that's how it works. That's how it I I am not sure back then if they had the insurance protecting those banks like they do yes. now. Forever. Yep. Oh yeah, they did that right after the depression, didn't they? Once, once Bank of Italy turned, Bank of America started as Bank of Italy. I'm not sure if anybody knows the history of that, but that's 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 a historical thing. But Bank of America started as Bank of Italy at first. Because during the Depression, it was the a lot of Italians that were out of work, obviously. It is what it is, right? So the Bank of Italy was called. Then it turned to the Bank of America. And they changed these laws after the Depression because none oh, of I, them, Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's when it went into effect that they had to ensure yeah. Thank God when you think about it, though, because, you know, and when people talk about depression, they don't realize there's protections in play now that prevent what happened back then from happening. Or back because then, that happened. Yeah. Or because a lot of that happened. Yeah. Back then, you had a lot of evil rich men literally bankrupting yeah. the country. Right. Uh, Nino uh, Nino made the mayo, and Gaggi was made by Frankie Scalise with okay. the board's approval. Hey, thank you, Johnny Boy. Very right, good great information. That's great. See, we don't know everything, right? I don't know everything. You don't know everything. This is what this is all about. 
we have some people in here that know so much about the mob it's incredible it's like check, wow. yeah, johnny boy check me on that but i'm pretty sure based on my recollection that it started out as bank of italy but i could be wrong and i'm i'm humble enough to say okay i'm wrong hey i just put a blog up about the galanti head and you know what's funny there he did not trust american italians but he trusted sicilians and it was the Sicilians that sold him out and got him killed. And okay, so it, it speaking, just goes, speaking from being within all of those, uh, how do you say it, regions, knowing people, Sicilians are the worst in that life. Yeah, and they and they gave him up, and he got and he got killed. And Sicilians are not; they're not all about family. Every. Not every. Most Sicilian families that you know, they have a lot of infighting going on. Yep, and those zips actually, uh, and then they took over. Part, they took over part of the business. They made out like bandits after Galanti got killed. So, it's a rough group, man. It's a rough group. Yeah. You got to give them credit. They know they know what they're doing, but it is a rough group. A in the criminal world and in the civil world, and then you know the what do you call and it? Civil world. Are, the cigar in Galanti's mouth was planted. That's classic. It, it was, he didn't die going back, getting shot a hundred times, and have a cigar in his mouth. That's they a beautiful put it there scene. For the effect of pictures, just just That's like, a beautiful scene. Yeah. I have no love lost for anybody involved in what he was involved in. You got, you know how anybody that knows me knows how I feel about the drug game. So, um, uh, quite all right with him being clipped. Like and that. see, and, and Roy DeMeo was even worse. Not only did he cut people up and take them apart. But he was also heavily in, involved in the porn world, the prostitution world. Of, I mean, he the stuff that he did, everything. Roy DeMeo was just pure evil. There was nothing good about Roy DeMeo. Wow. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And, wow. and you know, it, porn, porn was his big moneymaker. Listen, porn with, with adults, I don't have a problem with it. Do whatever the hell you want to do, right? Absolutely. Pouring pour with children, I got a problem with. Drug dealing, I got a problem with. You know, beating the piss out of women re repeatedly, I got a problem with. But porn is, get gonna, Bernardo. porn is going to be forever. Yep. Prostitution is going to be forever. And 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 one of the charges against Di Bernardo before he was killed by Sammy was child porn. They found child porn at go. his businesses in Times Square. The and clip that, was right. Yeah. So great decision. I think you're awesome going off like uh let's not seriously let's combo email. Okay, I don't know who you're talking to there, but okay. All right. We're good now. Oh, now how you doing? Thing, my man. What do you think? Uh, you good? With what? I, I, yeah. Lee, it was mentioned in Gene Barolo's book about Teddy D. B. D. Pretoro, uh, who helped with his book, made the uh, bomb that blew up. Phil Testa's, I, I have no, I didn't know that, Anthony, but that's a question that uh, I guess we can ask Gene Barillo, but it's a good question. Speaking of good fellows, what's your guys' opinions of Henry Hill, slime ball? Absolute slime ball, drug addict. He was the lowest of the lowest. Uh, there was nothing good about Henry Hill, and the, at, he got lucky. The movie made him into something he was not. Yes. And that's a, if anybody thinks that that they had anything to do, those gangsters had anything to do major with Henry Hill, they're kidding themselves. Do you think those guys would associate a Vario? Do you think Vario would even associate with someone like Henry Hill? Well, if he's bringing in funds, somewhat. Yeah. But, you know, we're talking Henry Hill's like in the movie showing all these drugs in the bag and he's dealing all these drugs all over the place and. And he's respected. And he was he's, disposable. He was disposable. And, and he was doing drugs in the movie. The he mess. was a big, a big addict. The guy was an addict and a drunk up to the day he died. Hundred percent. You know that's who he was. But a lot of people, you know, we see how many times do we see entertainment or Vlad do these uh, shows where people like Anthony Ramondi, people that we know are lying, get a million views. Because people don't, uh, people live in fantasy worlds. They want to think that this is what being a gangster is all about. I mean, pause me for two minutes. I got to take this call. If you want to stay on, I'm happy to stay no, on. No but I'll just this. I'll put you on mute and I'll read some of these. Okay. 
Okay, people, let's see. Hey, he's going. Let me talk about politics. I love Trump. No, anyway. <laughs> hey, chat, what was Tommy's role to rank during his work in the mafia associate or me? He was an associate, uh, Thomas and Bart, just so you know. He said that in the beginning of the show, so I can say that. Otherwise, I wouldn't. Okay, let's see what some... I am so far behind in here, guys. Gotti Mania uh, had guys try to real hard to make themselves out to look like gangsters. See, people, this is what I'm talking about when people have 250 people in their chats and yet their chat room's not moving. That's another show. But in this one, I right now almost 160, but I can't even keep up with the chat room. So... Why is my chat room so busy with 160, but you got these other people claiming to have 250 people in their views, but they only, but their chat room's barely moving? Why is that? And just go look at these other shows. They'll have 200, 250, but their chat room's barely moving. You know. Everyone hit like, Lee, hit subscribe, and also ring the bell. Please hit the bell. And people, if you have not subscribed and you're here, I'm getting very close to 3,000. I really appreciate it if you subscribe. Um, a lot of times, half the people that watch here aren't subscribed. So if you can subscribe, if you think it's even worth subscribing, I would really appreciate it. If you don't, I totally understand. Okay. High pressure sodium lights that were yellow instead of those prisons. LED. Oh. You got four people with like info and you uh, are five people, I guess, but as I don't know. Okay, let's see. Some of these people, when you write these, try, if you want me to read them, try to write, write them where I can read them. Okay. Let's see. We got uh, the Mo Bugs Gang. I've not seen this name before. I used to go clubbing with uh, Larry Scaturro back in the day. He wasn't one of the Bugs gang, but a good guy. I'm Mickey Bugs. Hey, you know what's funny about that? Uh, when I named the guy in the vehicle that I was dry and I was homeless, I said I'm Luigi Scaturro. So I used the name Scaturros because when I worked in Brooklyn, I used to work for 10 years. I worked at a place called Scaturros. It's an Italian supermarket. I worked. At, I was in the meat cutters union. And I worked in the meat department of Scaturos. And uh, that's why I chose that name, Scaturos. Purple, I'd rip off a vet to save my dog's life without a doubt. Possibly whack him. Yes, perpetual motion. My dog had just eaten uh, uh, a, a corn. Something got stuck. It was uh, egg corn. And it got stuck and the dog was dying. And so when they came out, they told me that it was $1,500. I had $1,500. It was $5,000 for the surgery. I had $1,500 in cash, and I gave it to them. And then they did the surgery, and they saved the dog's life. So perpetual motion, I would do it again. You're absolutely right. I would do the same thing. Yep. I would do the same thing, Lee. Now, if it was my wife or something... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I got 1500 I could save her life, or I could save my lab. Oh, my God, you're crazy. You know? That's great. I always seen uh, DuPont in and out of the club. I never <laughs> knew. <laughs> yeah, see, nobody knew that he was in jail for that. You brought information to the table there, uh, Tommy, that DuPont was in prison now for uh, murder. Not just prison. He's doing life, I believe. Yeah. Grant Calder, cop to him, Sicilian digs up people's past. It's horrible, people. Let me tell you something. I want to talk about that. Yesterday, this creep put up a picture of another man's wife who has nothing to do with this genre. He just decided to put up this guy's wife's picture. We're talking about, we're talking about Mac. So this guy's wife's not even involved in this. And FBS's wife is involved in this. She does the shows with him. So what does FBS do to show? And this is how you know the guy's a rat. 
he puts up a picture of Johnny Mac's wife who has nothing to do with this. Why? If that doesn't tell you about a human being and who they are, I was shocked that he did that. That's a scumbag punk move. That's what a punk and a corner drug dealer does, people. Exactly. Don't be shocked. Yeah. And they're all going to It's just sad that you put up a woman's, that you would do that to a woman that has nothing to do with this genre. The people that are doing this back and forth and nonsense are all going to go away eventually. Okay. Did I miss anything? Did I miss anything? No, we had some great conversations in here. People asking questions and uh, anybody Sarah, calling me a douchebag in there? <laughs> hey Jeff, did you want to jump in? It's up to you. If you Jeff, want to a minutes, minutes. I'm, I'm going to stay on until the two hour mark and then jump off because I don't do too many of that. Let me see. I'm going to give you yes. an invite. Jeff, I'm going to give you an invite if you want to jump in and talk a little bit about the mayo because I know you know a lot of shit. He may, he may have emailed me. I don't know. Yeah, he might be gone, but what the hell? Okay. The porn industry, let me tell you something, people. The porn industry was worth so much money back then. It was so dirty. It's not like it is now. I mean, now, yeah. now you have computers and people, women, you have women that are doing sex scenes under a bed at their house with their partners and stuff. I mean, the sleaziness. You know, you got to remember, these girls would come in, our guys would come into uh, uh, the Port Authority, and they and these pimps would pick them up, take them, and the next thing you know, they're up in these little dirty rooms making uh, porn videos. Uh, I'm going to bring this. Bofadia, what's going on? Hey, Lee. Last time we had a good time on uh, when we chatted. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on. So how's everything going with you? Everything's good. That's crazy. You mentioned Henry Hill, though. Why is that? Because my my aunt actually worked at the rehab he went to. It's called Beit de Shuva. It's on Venice, right? In, in um in California, and the dude was running with a Luciano, and he, they were out just robbing people. This dude did crazy things that I heard about Henry. Right. Crazy things. Um, dude, he he robbed a homeless veteran with no legs. The dude had no legs, and he went up to him and was like, "Hey, you." you do you do you need money, right? And the guy's like, um, I don't know. And then Luciano or Luciano, yeah, he was with Luciano. Steve's like Steve Luciano's like, okay, let's do let's uh get you some heroin, dude. And the other guys, the the homeless veterans, like, okay. And then he starts taking out his wallet. And Henry Hill just starts smashing this dude in the face, took his wallet, and they ran away. That's what druggies do. They <coughs> drug, Druggies have no morality. I mean, drugs make them do horrible things. And the, some of the things they, they would do high, but Henry Hill was high till the day he died. He was high and a street guy. He was both. He had a criminal mind plus was a street That That combination... He was a thief to begin with, which, okay, people make a living being a thief, plus a junkie. So with the ability to steal and scam people, plus the habit to feed, forget it. And they look, I mean, and they look for the weak. They look for the weak people. Of course they, do. they prey on the weak. That's why they snatch bags and chains and, you know, they snatch old ladies' bags at the shop, right? Or, you know, whatever it is. Ali Jabbar, $10. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, uh, Welcome, Ali. I haven't seen you in a while. I hope everything's going good in your life. So, uh, both of D, both of B, uh, um, I hear that you uh, that you're really you get along really good with um, FBS. What? <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> oh no, dude! I I'm not even trying to. FBS is okay, man. I mean, he he can do what he's he does, but he's gonna get what he gets. I mean, if anybody knows this this act the the, the actual game of this, the it's like actually how Tommy was just saying that 
what you're saying right now is what Tommy said. Sooner or later, it all catches up to you. I and mean, all... you're, you're not going to get views in the future. You're exactly. You're this for Super Chats. There's no point. You want millions of views on a video. Down the line, two years later, you want a million views. Right? Exactly. And 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 unfortunately, with what they're doing, that's going to all go away. That's all it is. It's just like I'm going to use people. It, it's so obvious that it, it's it, temporary. It, and Bofa D, what do you believe? I want to ask you this question. It seems like every show now he makes fun of you, your voice, and the way you talk and stuff. That's uh, okay. I mean, he can do what he he can do what he wants. You know, at the end of the day, I know who I am. I know who I'm sleeping with. I know my wife doesn't hate me. Like, Shit, man. You're really? Good. I never had a wife like that. <laughs> no, she hates me, probably. <laughs> She's probably mad at me for something. I mean, when are they That's not great. Mad? My, that wife, is, oh, my wife's liked me for the first month, and once they got that is great. Day, but That's seriously, I, I can sleep next to her. Like, I don't have to be like, are you okay? Dude, he makes her sit... He makes her sit behind him. Johnny made that point. I mean, yeah. Johnny, that's crazy to me. Both of it, the, let, me ask you, let me ask you a question, both of the, no. Do you think that it would be nice if he just stopped this attack and went on and just did his show and try to put out content? Do you think? Okay, let, 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 me, let me intervene here. Let me interject or whatever you want to say. I think it's all in delivery. I think the... Uh, the topics, no matter how interesting they are, will not grab people unless the delivery is good. Well, well, Tommy, think about this. A year down the line, you want people to still view, like, view you, right? Yeah. yeah. I didn't even so, start yet, so yeah. <laughs> so, so then we're getting into content. Who the... All right, Josie's cool as fuck, but... If like who is gonna the people are gonna have to go find Josie to if you're going on a rant about people and just doing high school drama, no one's good. They're gonna be like, ah, oh, fuck this. Excuse my language. I'm sorry. You can edit that out. I'm, you're I'm right. Here's the, but here's the but thing. You're right. Right. But both of me, here's here's the thing. Two minutes. If you don't get on topic, whatever it might be, it could be about sheets. It could be about coffee. It yeah. could be about the mafia. If you're not on topic in two minutes, I'm gone. Yeah, and, and you know that's the thing with it, how they uh, YouTube looks at you too. It's the first two minutes of a video when oh. you gain a person or lose a bit person. Well, they know me very well then, yeah. I guess, huh? Well, and, they, and the, the algorithm the magic number two minutes. Is it the really? algorithm <laughs> within okay. five minutes? Within five minutes, the algorithm judges if you're a suggested video or not, right? So if I'm looking at someone's content who's related to your content, which coincides with your hashtags or the things you put in the information about your video, like within five minutes, it judges how many likes you get and how many new subscribers you get within five minutes, just on one video. And then if it's, if it's deems it like what? I think over 70% versus the like general population of people that do YouTube videos. I think if, if it's over 70%, then you in the same genre that they judge you in are going to put you as recommended in people's news feeds. You know what I mean? Like in people's feeds, I mean, you know, okay. subscriptions as recommended. Okay. So... And, and, you know, I'll give you an example. I put up a website, and I've gotten over 3,000 views in three days. I love it. And the funny thing about that, I got those views based on putting up the advertising on my YouTube and saying I had a blog. And I have someone knowledgeable writing the blog. And people are pouring in there and reading these blogs. And every day on my website, I notice the reaction time goes up and up and up. Like it started off with two minutes, and now it's up to like eight minutes. So people are li literally going into my blogs and reading them for eight minutes. You know, you know how you can go online and see people's, you can go online and view people's channels and see the analytics uh, about it. Like you can see there's red, 
there's yellow and there's green and red are bots and then you can just see the level of people you can even go on youtube and see and see like the level of people joining their channel and and you can be like okay why are 10 people exactly joining a day every day it's just 10 people or 11 people it's always the same and but they're losing green and they're losing yellows did you see, did you hear fbs try to say this about my show the other day saying that my views were going up 10 views every day he lied but and and this is what he does he deflects he deflects for what he's doing and tries to put it on somebody else. He's I projecting. Huh? He's projecting. That's what he's doing. I guarantee like you. I guarantee you. I am gonna, it's very, very simple. They're going to all go away if they don't keep their game up, get out of the drama, and del deliver what the people want. Again, the topic can be anything. You, have a, good delivery. you right. have a good delivery right now. I think your delivery is good. So well, I think you're gonna do all, you're gonna do good. You're gonna do well. The website, even if it's a one paragraph that's new every day or two, that's what's gonna keep people coming back. It could be a small paragraph. I put exactly. on a new, I put on a new exactly. blog every day, and it people doesn't have to be, and it doesn't have to be at great length. Just a very, yeah, very exactly, yeah. exactly. And the same thing with these lives and all that. Three hours. Who, who wants to hear somebody for three hours talk about shit? But talking about nothing. All right, this nothing. Is I'm gonna do oh, nothing. Oh, to, oh, for, can you tell? Oh, what seconds. did you say today? Oh, what did I miss? Forget about that. So they're all gonna go away. Right here, check this out. Okay. Hey everybody, mom tube, what's up? Oh, yeah, Shanna's good. She doesn't have COVID. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's good. Oh no, fuck that guy. He's or I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um I hate yes. that guy. Oh, yeah, this is good. And we're doing this. And we're going to go plan a trip this week. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your donation. Blah, That's blah, definitely. blah. It's unfortunate. And I'll tell you why. I think there was room for everybody. If you just stayed on point, stayed on track, and did your own way, I think there is room for everybody. Tommy, let me ask you a question, though. If you and I had a business and we yeah. sold the same thing, uh -huh. Right, we both were in hardware. Would it would it benefit you to work with another business that sold the same thing that you did to get? Maybe we can get a supplier somewhere else. Yeah, right? share the wealth. Right, it's like you want the same. You all right? So you have five hundred people that all subscribe to you, right? And but then you want to make them choose sides. You no good. choose this side, choose that side. No good. So then you lose half your subscribers. That's 100% correct. There are six pizzerias within a half a mile of where I live. They all do well. Nobody criticizes the other one. Right? And you don't hate on the other person. Like, nope. you don't hate on Lee nope. for getting views. No. You don't do that. Like, no. You want Lee's views to be yours too. You don't get on. Well, and, and that's where we that's where we are now. See, I have nobody from that show comes on this show and unless they change their name. I'm sure people change their name because they don't want to be caught up. So they, they just go, but I'll tell you one thing. I will never tell anybody in my chat room not to go to FBS because it's none yeah. of my business. That's right. Classless, and I wouldn't ever tell that. If you want to be up, can I admit something to you guys? I watch FBS. So when, some, when he has a good show, I will watch him. But two minutes, problem, Lee. I said it before. Two yeah. minutes. I watch them all. They got me blocked. Some of them. Yep. Because but I'm people, blocked on. I'm blocked on every name. Every single. They got me blocked, right? But I'm gonna tune in. But lately, I haven't been hanging around too long because two minutes. There are two minutes. Videos. I mean, I don't care if he makes fun of the way I speak. I mean, I speak like that for a reason because I know how I'm speaking to an audience and I need to speak slower and I, I do it on purpose because I've been in this game for a minute, right? Like, I've been in this game. I got a channel. Like, I got a real channel. 
But I, I both I gotta I gotta read this. We get good jokes sometimes. Mob Entertainment says my ex-wife likes me so much she insists that I hand deliver the monthly child support check. <laughs> okay, let's see. Grant Calder, uh, hypocrite city over to Cucks and Simps who tried to peace if they want to smoke. They get oh, that's one thing I'm going to talk about, people. When you have a show, there's things. There's a couple things you shouldn't do on your show. You shouldn't eat. It's classless. And you shouldn't, <laughs> and you, and you shouldn't smoke cigarettes. Joey gets it's, a pass. It's class. <laughs> It's Joey okay. gets a pass, and I may smoke a cigar here and there. No, I don't consider smoking a cigar. Smoking <laughs> cigarettes continuously. Do you some know, of these people smoke joints on their shows? Yeah, it's like, don't they get it that a lot of people don't like this stuff? So, you you know, our job is to come here and perform for people, respect people. Now, if we come here and we're eating food or, you know, or, or, or fucking got a shake in our hand or ice cream or smoking cigarettes or a joint, it's classless. It turns people off. We're not supposed to do that. We're entertainers. That's this what it comes down to. Exactly. This is for the people. I yes. mean, I'm glad that people don't really know who I am and who I work with. Will but I be okay if I have a cigar and a glass of wine while I'm doing mine? No, yeah. yeah. It's, that's, there's nothing wrong with your That's classy. Okay. You know, that's classy. I'll be okay. honest with you. All right, good, good, good. I mean, yeah. think about what a kid would do and what an adult would do, right? If I'm well, just Mike, Mike, he would smoke a cigar with me, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> but a kid's not, like, kid's going to be smoking a cigarette, oh, taking God. shots out of a bottle. No, 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 no. You know no. what I mean? Like, I'm talking about smooth and slow, enjoying the night, having a cigar, sipping some white. And having a podcast, that's okay, right? Exactly. I think that's okay. But right. a kid, a child, uh, someone that doesn't understand how this works and how to be social is going to be like, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to drink out of the bottle in front of people because that's cool. I'm going to smoke a joint or roll a joint in front of people and smoke it. Like, they don't understand that your job Right. And it's not, it, it technically is your job, whether you're making money or not. Your job is to entertain. And you don't want to seem like a fucking retard. There are people on here, excuse my language. I'm sorry. I know I, I shouldn't be speaking like that. I'm so sorry. But um, there are people on here that I'm really sorry for cursing. Um, no, no, no. You're, I, just so you do know, on YouTube, you're allowed to curse every once in a while. YouTube doesn't say anything to you. It's when you curse continuously that it bothers them. And they yeah, even say that. I, I know, but I, I try yeah. not to do it at all. And I'm messing up right now. Oh, it's I'm, hard, man. It's in our nature, buddy. It's very, very hard to do. Well, well I, like, I, I believe in what you guys are saying. Like, Lee asked me that question, what I think about FBS making fun of me almost every show. I'm not even on his show. I can't even speak. So like these, so, but they don't understand what's really going on behind the scenes. Like they don't understand. Hey, both. I want to read this. Um, Lee, don't worry about the others. All no, non uh, nonsense. You're doing a good job. Tommy, I've listened to you in the past. You seem like a real good dude. Thank you. Lee, I sent you some contact info yesterday to your website. Thank you, Charles. And thank you. Thank for you. Reading. Thank you for reading, uh, going on the website. Thank I you. Thank you, Charles. Much love to everybody. Be safe. Okay. Both Anthony, yes. FBS uh, goes ahead. and I don't. Hey, people, don't write me too much shit about FBS. I don't want to make this to FBS. Yeah, show. you don't want to hate FBS. You just want to see him for who he is. You just want to make your own decision. Is he hurting people or is he not? Well, when you put up the picture of a man's wife, who has nothing to do with this? You're a scumbag. How? What? That, They're not street guys. I can tell you that. Yeah, no. They definitely were not around wise guys. That's I not a that. street guy. You hit it right on the button. Listen Tommy. to me. We we're not around guy. the guys I was around. I can tell nope. you that a hundred percent. That's not what a street guy does. A street guy would never do that. My type then, of street guy. Then here's my his type of street guy. Now maybe junkies yep. do that, but my type of street guys. That is a junkie move. But see, here's what he'll say. Oh, well, they're going after my wife. So I no, 
Your wife's on this with you. Your wife goes after people. She went after me. She insults people all the time. So don't compare your wife to Johnny Mac's wife. There's no... no it's, not, it's not mob to Forget about that title. You know, and, 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 and you know, that's something a punk would do, put up a man's wife, because you know, but would you do that if you were right next to Johnny Mac? FB, no. FBS sent me an email today. This is why I was trying to get my emails out so people saw them. Basically, the first one is like, I don't know why you hate me. If I did anything to offend you, I, I apologize. Okay. Can you, can we can we end this? Okay. No response. Oh, you wrote You wrote him that? Yeah. It was shown. No, why would he respond? He needs he needs to have stuff to talk about on his show. And here's Bofa. the thing. And here's the thing Lee, about Lee, Lee. Lee, if Bofa was okay and went on his show, you shouldn't have a problem with it. Am I correct? Yep. And listen, if, people, I, went, if I happened to be on FBS's show or whoever show might be, you wouldn't have a problem with it, right? Yeah. No, it, that's why I got all the voicemails. Why I would you, send right? this to Lee. Lee, you got to get with me because I got, I said, got Johnny Mask got it. I should send it to you. But like I got voice messages and and stuff like and there was one time I was on Gunsmoke's show. MRE even was like Bofa called your show. You kicked him off after a minute and then just made fun of him and then bragged about how you do that to people. What's your problem, dude? And then. And that's exactly what he did. And oh, then he'll everybody. be like, well, you're not a man. You can't come defend yourself. I want Dude, everybody to make it. Just be gentlemanly. You're leaving people in, in, in the back room when they come on stream. You're leaving people in the back room. And you won't, you won't bring them on when they have to say anything. But then you're on saying, come on my show, come on my show. But you're not bringing them on your show when you obviously see that they're ready to defend themselves. Lee, let me ask you a question. Let me read this real quick, though. Lee, email me when I'm done. Want to ask you something. Stay safe, everyone. Ali, I'll do that. Once again, thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. Where did Jeff Nadu go? Was he in here? He was, but he didn't want to come in. Uh, if uh, He's asking for my information, but the email's not going through. If you want to send him my contact information, Lee, go right ahead. I could do that. Okay. Have, I'll send that if, to you. If me. you have his, you can send him my cell number. Not a problem. Here, if you say one, I got to say something real quick to be fair to FBS. Yes, I'll be fair to him. If people remember, FBS and I, we started, you know, he had his little show. I had mine, and we started together. One thing about FBS, when he first started, he was very good. The things he talked about, the shows he talked about, he sat at the edge of his bed. He wasn't cocky. He was a totally different type of person. His show was actually very good. It's not too late for him to get back there and do that. And so I'll be honest with you. He, all the mean things he's doing, I still would like to see him get back to that person and be that person that he was. I want everybody to succeed. Get yeah, back that's on topic. Keep it gentlemanly. There's room for everybody. You, you know, you you know, Johnny tonight is going to show some emails for between me and FBS, and he's even he's threatening me with my fucking parents' address. Who is doing that? FBS. FBS. You can go on. on. You can go on my Facebook, which I was stupid. I was stupid What's about that? it. You could. But you that's could... a street guy. That's how you know he's not a street guy. A street guy would never do that to another man. That's the shit be... that a snitch does. We would beat up one of our own for doing that. Right. And I'm like, what the fuck? You... What I'm that? sorry. I'm just so mad about this. I don't mean to curse, but like, I'm, I I get an email like, oh, here's pictures of your, of your Facebook pic, the Facebook pictures of my parents. He's got to pause and restart. Not, not him specific. In general, people need to pause and restart. And I'll say it a thousand times. There's room for everybody. Come with something good. Stop bashing each other. Stop bashing people. This can be a good thing. Uh, different hours of the day. There's something for everyone, and it can be very, it can be very good. And Lee, you guys, you guys, guys, Lee, you're doing a good job staying away from the nonsense. And guys, this is what's very important too. Uh, you guys that are in his chat room, and he does this, and you guys are watching him do this, and you laugh. 
and you tell him to do this, I can honestly say that's one thing I would never do on this show. If I ever did something like that, I would expect you people to leave me and not be on my show. Yeah. So I, I, whole life I wouldn't be here right now, Lee. And, and I'm nobody, but I would me personally, I wouldn't entertain. I'm enjoying this. If you were that way, I would not, you know, you I answered and, your and, and, and let's be fair, Carmen. FBS gave out Tony's pizza's mother number without a doubt, but Tony Pizza did a lot of fucking bad shit too. Yeah, but I didn't do anything to this dude. I know you didn't. Yeah, and, and I just asked him to to apologize. But you're going to use my my mother and father's address and their number just because you found me on Facebook, went to my info, and then saw my family members, and then gave it out. Fuck, yeah. well, dude. What's the purpose of that though? What, what comes of that? Here's what happens. Sooner or later, you do that to the wrong person. That's Wait, what what, but what comes of something like that? What's the purpose of any of it? I have no idea. And it, you know what? It's because I called him out on Johnny Mac's chat. Yes, listen to, listen to this. We are all here for a good time, not a long time. Make no one's count. trying to make trouble. Make, it count, make your mark. Lee, what you're doing right now, if you or I drop dead tonight, this is here forever. Yep. Yeah. They're going to go back and say, that guy was, was a pretty good guy. He was entertaining. Okay. Or they're yeah. going to go back and say, that guy was a douchebag the way he talked about other people. New we're we're not, New we're not says, to we can people. take our last nap tonight, right? Yep. New Beginning says they were both wrong, but FBS did it. Uh, they were both wrong, but you know what, New Beginnings? The reality is uh, Tony like literally drove around in the car making fun of my brother dying. So fuck Tony. I don't even talk about Tony no more. So Tony you know, Pizza's when, a piece of shit. They're all like, how do people not? And yeah. how, I don't understand it. Like this guy's, you're gonna threaten me with my parents' information and their number. What are you gonna do? Tell them to call them through the night? Fuckers. I still. Do you know how many? Do you know how many calls I got yesterday from Massachusetts? Massachusetts. I know who it is. But it's his that this guy's friends, but I got a bunch of them. You know, I'm it, so sorry for cursing. You know, stop saying that, please. You don't have to say that you're sorry. Uh Bofer is hurt because FBS won't let him on the show. That's what Sarah Longstroke says. So Sarah Longstroke, I, I know who you are. All right. I know Shanna. Hi, Shanna. <laughs> okay. And I called you out on Johnny Max. I called you out on Johnny Mac's comments, and I found who FBS was on Johnny Mac's comments. I called you out. I'm hurt because of what? That's the same comment, Shanna. That's the same <laughs> comment you sent. And I didn't say anything negative to you. And I can show receipts about it, Shanna. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't know. Who the other thing is way over the line for me. Can't accept that. Per oh, per oh, emotion, that's exactly it. You know what? I forgave Tony for everything, but once he went to that level, there's no forgiveness no more. But Tony does things that are so low. Look at here. Look at here. Tony can have a good platform. FBS can have a good platform. Lee can have a good platform. We can all have a good platform. Just keep it right. You're Which, never going. You're, 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 you're never going Tony's back. This way. Listen, Lee, Lee, you're never going back that way, and I can understand why. And, and one I, thing about Tony: Tony's very entertaining. His yeah. voice, he's smart. His joke, his jokes, the way he cracks, he doesn't have to do what he has to do. He's got he's a God-given talent there. Yeah, he's much more entertaining than than FBS. He's got a God-given talent, a natural God-given talent. Yeah, and it's no a shame. Doubt about no doubt about it. I feel bad. Not that I feel bad. He blocked me. And I watch him in the morning because, you know, you guys know I'm a morning guy. I watch it. I tune in. I'm blocked. I can't comment. But Well, in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night, and then in the middle of the night. I watch. We're, we're, I watch everybody. I'm blocked from FBS, I think, and I'm blocked from Tony Pizza. I, I where think where are you guys working? Lee. Yeah. Do you have a problem with me tuning in to those guys? Absolutely not, right? Oh no. Of course I don't you care. Don't. Who watches FBS? Of course you don't. 
I dude, that's what, that, dude, he called in Gunsmoke show to tell to tell Gunsmoke to take me off. Like that's crazy shit. Kurt, just crazy. Okay, I I'd like to answer this question, Tommy. Uh, what do you think of Curtis Sliwa? Uh, oh my god. And let me tell you something about this. I like to say before before anybody says anything about Curtis Sliwa, he's a friend of mine. And let me tell you something about Curtis Sliwa. When my brother Tom was homeless, had no place to go, he went down to the Guardian Angels headquarters. And my brother was only 17 years old at the time. Curtis Sliwa let him come into the clubhouse and sleep in that clubhouse for a month with other homeless kids who were Guardian Angels. And see, these are the things you don't hear about. The media wants to tell you the bad things that people do. But the fact that, you know, the way he treated these kids and why they bonded with him was because he took a lot of them off the streets that had no place to go. Listen, I was probably a kid that needed somebody like that in my life. I wouldn't end it up in a cage, probably. And yes, Curtis Sleewood does shit wrong, but so do all of us. Everybody does. But, you know, the fact of the matter is he put together this huge organization where when I was on the subways in the 80s and they walked into the subway car, I felt safe. Yeah. You know, and I was so, a 12-year-old kid seeing that, so yeah. yeah. I mean, the cops, wouldn't, the cops, they were all sitting in, uh, uh, collecting money and sitting in, they wouldn't come out of their, uh, they were behind a desk. And the only reason the cops went back to work in New York is because when Giuliani became governor, he said to the cops that wouldn't work, that you come back to work and get your ass in the subways, or I'm going to fire all of these. Wow. And that's why they went back into the subways, because Giuliani made them go back into the subways and work. But they were taking advantage of the systems. you got to remember, the New York City uh, Police Department in the 70s and 80s was the most corrupt. Oh. Yeah. The shit I used to see in Times Square with cops was unbelievable. <laughs> they would mug. I would see them mug pot dealers, put them inside the rooms, t- steal their drugs and tell the pot dealers, uh, and then tell the dealers to get the fuck out of there. I would see cops right. do that all the time. That's Lee, crazy. what do you think about this now? It was what just the way it was. I, I, they, they asked me a question. I don't know if I have anything specific against Curtis Lee. Well, I can't say I do. He did his thing. The other guys did their things, and that was the streets at that time, and that's the way it went down. Do I have anything against Curtis Lee? Well, no. And here's the reality. They tried to kill him, the mob. That was the time. But that was the but, time. But why did they try to kill him? Because Curtis Lee was said that the Gaudis were putting drugs on the street, stop praising them for being Look, something they're not. I used to listen to it every morning on 770, Mob Talk with Curtis and uh, Kobe, right? Yeah. Yeah, the people then, called into Howard Stern and I tuned in every day, and I'm I'm saying to myself, why he's going too far, too far, too far. I said that too. Mob talk is one thing. Mob talk is one thing, but now you're going for the juggler vein. You're. I you're, did say that. Yeah. You know what I said to myself, I said, okay, Curtis, you said it a couple times. Yeah. You've got your piece out there, but if yeah. you say it every damn day, you're looking for trouble. You're looking for trouble. It came his way, and it, and. and, and it's, and the guys that did it at that time had balls. Unfortunately, 90% of them went bad. And, 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 and the guys that went after Sliwa, you got to remember, the only reason Sliwa survived is because he was a street guy. Yes. And he knew to put his head behind the, the guy driving. He got I don't his- react in a moment. Yeah. So I Sliwa- can react in a moment. I know what's coming. And this guy, this guy is shooting Sliwa in the stomach, and he's aiming for the head. So Sliwa knows he's aiming for the head. He takes his head and puts it behind the driver, knowing so, that that guy is not going to shoot the driver. That goes then, back. To here's him. where they messed up. Uh, t- uh, okay. w- Tony Tommy Y left the window to fuck open. Listen, and, and Slee would go goes back to one thing. That's the gene pool. That's when the gene pool started to change. Because I don't think those guys that were in that cab were in the life out of survival. I think they were at. That was where it changed to glamour versus survival. Well, that guy, Yamadi, he had three murders up at that point already. Okay. So he was a killer. Okay. He sent the killer after Sliwa. But that there were three guys in the car, car though. Huh? There was, wasn't there three guys in the car? There were two cars in the, the driver. and he Who was in the car? How many guys? Two or three? Two. There was one hiding under the passenger seat. He was in the front when Sliwa got in the back. And then one was, was a horrible yep. shot. We should have gotten clipped after that disaster. Yep. No, right. actually, he wouldn't. He didn't get clipped. He's a captain now. He didn't get clipped because 
he he delivered killer shots. It just so happened that Sliwa lived. Wow. One of the shots was a gut shot. Wow. In the belly. Interesting. Okay. And, you know, a matter of fact, Sliwa shows his wounds. He can't even eat regular food anymore. What did I know? That's and on top of that, the, the bullets were dummy bullets. What did Mikey Scars have to do with this? Was he in that car? No, Mikey Snow. There were two people were in that car. He wasn't in that car. No, and the two people and the driver wind up snitching on and I'm not going to get into who the shooter said who else he said snitched on him. I'm not going to come up with that. And say I know, it. I know. It's a whole other topic. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's not. It's not a whole other topic. All right. Let's That's just call it a Jesus. But to this day, that driver, that, that shooter says this person snitched on him. And it's in a and it's basically in a 302. Right. So we'll just leave it like that. See, like, I got a bunch of people on here's 302s, as you just said, just because you said 302s. Yeah, I don't want to bring up his 302s. So no, no, I wish that's I could a whole other show. show. That's another that's show. A, that's a, that, Lee, that's a uh, episode I may not. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. bring it up right now. But yeah. I got a bunch of people's 302s. And yeah. I got the testimony. I got transcripts. I got everything. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, that's the funny thing, Bofa. It's out there. People really want it. You know, you know. I I have two. I you know I have two uh, uh, two uh, FBI interviews that was done. And when I seen the FBI interviews, I was shocked. But you know, it's not hard stuff to go out and get. You know, and that's the most amazing thing. No, so it is. It is. And let me tell you why. And even with my profession, as I work in law, like. If, the, if you can't get a 302 for someone, and there are people that we can't get 302s for. Then yeah. they're confidential informants. They are informants. I know like, how the whole system works, man. I was a victim of it. I know how it works. And I mean, uh, think, think about it. Hold if on. you can't pull the data, they're, they're live. And, and just so you know, Seymour Scagnetti, you're right, man. Gene sits with 302s. Yes, he does. But you know what, Seymour? Right. So do a lot of other people that you would be shocked about. I don't, you know, I don't like that. That, that bothers me. Snitches of snitches. But uh, there's 302s that you can't even access. Even if you, if you 302, that, they're lawyer. active dry snitches. Yeah. Well, well if, if I'm like, I'm this guy's lawyer, can I get all his paper? No, you cannot. And no. Yeah. No. The answer is no. That well, means well, that they are Then active. the prosecutor can get it. Why can't I, I'm I'm representing this person? Why can't why can't I? I got the twenty seven dollars. Like I'll pay for it. The only way you cannot get an active three hundred two is if someone is a a Ex legit current informant. Exactly. And I know the game, man. Yo, I'm telling you, try to go get this information. What I got in my fifty two years, forget about it. You can't even forget. It. It's crazy. Look, there's someone that said they had. 17 capital charges. Now, let me explain to the viewers what a capital charge is. A capital charge is a charge where you're, where, where you're liable, where the death penalty is on the table always. That's a capital charge. So they dropped 17 charges to five, to six, to four, to five. In the, no. That's not how. That's not how the government works. They One give second, you Wayne, Wayne. I have no problem with you being a liberal. Bless me you. either. I love yeah, liberal I, ladies. I don't care. Liberal, what liberal ladies are the best, man. They party. It's awesome. Uh, like people say, Jesus was a liberal. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Is that a know, Jewish joke? Because I'll laugh. No problem with liberals, man. Just be respectful. I don't care what. Hey guys, you are. listen. I'm going to have to close the show down because I've been on over two hours. But Tommy, both of them, I'll let you go. Thank you both for being here today. It was a nice surprise. But Much Tommy, love. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate love it. For everybody, man. Anything you want to close with, or are you just closing down? Um, well, no, I'm going to say goodbye. But if, is there anything you want to close with, Tommy, to tell people about your show no. or what you're doing? Uh, I'm, I'm hesitant to pull the trigger. I don't know which way I'm going yet. People could subscribe. I only got 250 subscribers. No. I'll close. I'll close. But you got to start somewhere, Tommy. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I mean, 250 is not bad. You'll just you double it, you'll triple it, and it'll be I'm a little right hesitant. There. I don't know where, where, which direction I want to go in. Like Everybody I said, I don't believe what you hear. 
Don't believe I got fashion people here. lined up. I got boxers lined up. I got wrestling people lined up. I got a uh, nephew of a wise guy that got clipped lined up for a Genovese, guys. I got all different things lined up. I just don't know when to pull the trigger, how to do it. Do I wait till I get subs or do I just go live? You know, I don't know what to yeah. do. So, well, to and, Tommy, and you folks, can you can privately message me. I'm Clyde Frog one two three four at yahoo.com. Right. and I'll help you. I'll help you. Right. I, I don't, guys, I don't I'm gonna have to close this down. Tommy, Lee, thanks. I started with a good topic, a great topic to start with. We really we covered it nicely. Yeah. I think. Yes, we did. Thank you, Tommy. I appreciate everything, man. All right, guys, have Thank a good you. night. Okay. Take Much care. love. Peace, everybody. Love. Be safe. Take care, Bofa. Thank you. Okay, people. Well, thank you. I appreciate you being here today. We've been on for over two hours. I wasn't planning on that. But uh, uh, we'll see you again. Uh, probably tomorrow or Saturday, I'll do another live show. Um, but like I said, um, I got my website. Please go to it. Uh, I have a lot of really good stuff there being written. And I'm not writing this mafia stuff. I have people writing it for me that actually know the mob much better than me. So please go check out, you know, all you got to do is go to mobtubers.com and go to the blog. Check them out. Let me know what you think about them. Everybody take care. Thank you so much.